Uh, hey, James. Hello, Howard. I host can't hear of, anything in my headphones, but my host, cans. Host oh. of Jimmy Kimmel Live. Don't act like you haven't seen Howard. We heard you spent the weekend together. Yeah, we made love. I thought that was going to be our secret. <laughs> no, that wasn't a secret. Oh. It was just a, you know what it is? What? When I hang out with Jimmy, I feel like kind of like I disappoint him. Wrong. What? Why? Because when I'm not on the radio... I'm not a whole lot of fun, and uh, I'm actually kind of quiet and not all that witty. And I think Jimmy's, you know, Jimmy kind of worships Are me a little bit. Are you fishing for compliments? No, no, no. Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy <laughs> Welcome to the show, Jim. Jimmy <laughs> looks up to me. You it's know? true. Uh -huh. true. And, and like, so you expect that he expects something like I had more. Jimmy's stories, like when he was in high school, he listened to me, or someone sent him a tape and he wanted to go into radio. I don't know yeah. what, what the whole thing is, but... Then, like, is this your way of saying you want Ralph, to, I mean, Fred to play music and, and for me to <laughs> go on? No, it's, it's him saying he wants Ralph to no, play but music. It's always <laughs> awkward because I know, you know, probably Jimmy's expecting this great guy to hang out with him. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm really not a lot of fun, as Beth will tell you. I disagree. We had a, we did have a lot of fun. And I have a lot of, I have a lot of fun. I'm not, what, what do you think I, I'm expecting? I'm not expecting Robin Williams bouncing off the wall. <laughs> that would be annoying. But yeah. I know, like, you like to sit and, like, you know, you, like, Jimmy came out to see me. So it was like then i feel obligated that you know we should be together yeah well that that is a you know that is one of the things when you go visit, when you somebody, visit someone they actually are <laughs> well, supposed no, to be with know, you you should do jimmy, the great gatsby you should just never show up <laughs> well after jimmy left i said to beth you know i said jimmy's a great guy everyone knows i love jimmy i think jimmy's a really together great uh -oh. guy together yeah he's got it pretty together. together robin robin <laughs> Yeah, he is pretty together. Robin, you're, you're sitting on a pot of coffee. Uh, How really, dare you uh, judge? Well, nobody really, said I was together. I really like Jimmy. No one could be an easier house guest. I even like his cousin Sal. The, He's you know, an easy house guest? I am. Sal, yeah, because Sal is like... Like that wall. He doesn't say anything. He says <laughs> he just, it. Well, like a potted plant. He was nervous. He's not usually like that. But I said he to, gives Sal a sports sticker. He's fine for like you know. I said to I said to I said to Beth afterwards. I said you know, <laughs> Jimmy coming out to the house makes me realize. I don't think I want people coming out to the house. So she goes, she goes, oh. Good, thanks, Jim. No, this is positive. <laughs> it I is? Said, she said, why? She goes, no one could be easier than Jimmy. Like, Jimmy's so great. I said, that's right. And the fact of the matter oh. is... Everybody else is a pain in the butt? No. I said, even I can't handle that because I feel... I couldn't even sleep when Jimmy was over because it was like... <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, Jimmy's probably awake and he wants to Let get Let me together. go down and see I what he's go doing. So I'm up at five in the morning checking to see if Jimmy's up. Well, who's up at five in the morning looking to get together with I'm their... I'm neurotic. I can't have people He over. doesn't want Jimmy to be walking around while he's sleeping. You know what you got to do, Jimmy, is you got to just... Howard knew I'd be asleep till 3 p.m. Well, and then at 9 a.m. I was going to have a chess lesson. And I felt guilty. I said to Beth, is it okay that I'm having a chess lesson? Because what if, you know, it was for an hour. Uh, so I was like... She goes, well, I guess so, but Jimmy's your guest, and he's here. And I go, but I want my chess lesson, too. You mean Jimmy can't hang out with his cousin and do stuff? No, I'm fine. I don't like to get up early anyway. But right. In fact, I actually intentionally, I got up what I thought was early. I got up at, like, I made sure to get up at 930, so <laughs> around when your chess lesson was over, then, you know, we, no, could, we could hang out. Yeah, we you should have combined out. the two and uh, had Jimmy give you a chess lesson. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you just chess. say to your guest, you know what, I got a chess lesson at 9 I did. or whatever, I told you. and did. do whatever you want, Everything and I'll is, see you in uh, the uh, afternoon I, I, or something. I'm just not good. I feel guilty. Everything is very well scheduled. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, you're very well scheduled. You know what's think. happening when you go there. It's yeah. almost on a list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad Jimmy went. Now I have someone I can call to ask how the house looks. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you straighten yourself out, you might get a Well, yeah, they don't want, like, crazy drug people yeah, knocking yeah. at the door. What, me and three cops aren't fun to have over your house? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, So I always feel like... You know what, Artie making an escape. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other weird aspect is, like, I'm hanging out with Jimmy, uh -huh. and... <laughs> and, you know, where Jimmy and I were having a private conversation, uh -huh. and I even said to Beth, I'm going to ask Jimmy about Sarah. Did you hear my rap about this this morning? No, I, I couldn't get my serious. Dude, you and fucking Sarah went through weird shit. <laughs> Howard told us on the air. What the saying. fuck, man? No, I would never Thank do that. God you got out of there. With a midget? A midget? <laughs> it wasn't a midget. It was just short. <laughs> no, I said, I said, you know, Jimmy and I were talking, and I even said to Robin this morning, mm -hmm. I said, I sat with Jimmy. We talked for like, I don't know, a half hour, an hour privately about, you know, about a bunch of things. But one of the things being what happened with Jimmy and Sarah. I need an explanation because I was close with Jimmy right. and Sarah as a couple. 
and I, I said to Robin, I have no idea what Jimmy's talking about. He says, it first of all, hour. of course, it was not for the air, <laughs> but in, in the same, he said he went to Beth, and he didn't, he couldn't tell her what you said. Because immediately, yeah. you know, after we had the conversation, Beth wanted to come down, but she saw we were talking privately. Oh. She said to me, okay, so what did Jimmy say about Sarah? Right. I said, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck he said. <laughs> For Howard to listen to you, you have to work Howard into the conversation. Yeah. There you go. I don't, I don't know what I said either. I mean, I, I don't it know. Was the lamest, most he mysterious. He said he's not sure you know why you broke When a chick asks me how, what the day, if, they wanna, if I want to hear what the day was like, I'm like, only if I'm in it. Yeah. I wish it could have been more interesting, but... Uh... No, it wasn't that it was an interesting. I just didn't understand. I, he I, said you were saying things, but he didn't. He couldn't understand what you were saying. I don't understand what I'm saying most of the time either. So. <laughs> you know but what maybe I mean? it wasn't not that interesting. Maybe it wasn't interesting. And then also it's awkward because Jimmy says to me, look, this is private. So I said, okay, well, you know, so what does that mean? I... I I, I, I can't well, here's call the, the problem. Empire? Here's yeah. the problem is that <laughs> I know you would like me to to talk to you about these things because mostly because you're curious about this stuff. But well, I know that mostly because he's a yenta. It's <laughs> hard for you to remember what is okay to talk about and what isn't okay to talk about. Right. So for your own protection, I feel like <laughs> that was smart. <laughs> Maybe you didn't tell him anything. Well, you didn't. I'm telling you. I know I did. I told you, you everything. Did? I mean, that, I told you everything that was there. It's not that interesting, you know. It's sometimes. Not. It People was just don't, boring. Something happens. Horribly I don't know boring. what it is. It was terrible, actually. <laughs> it's unpleasant, you know. There was no good stories. I was, uh, there, yeah, there were nobody no had any great problems, like, you know, they was were the harboring. Sex good? The sex was good, right? Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, for, 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 you. for me, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. <laughs> the sex was good. <laughs> you haven't checked with her? <laughs> I'm pretty I think I could safely assume it wasn't that great for <laughs> her. But the public thing was... The can public, I taste your juice? <laughs> the public thing was... <laughs> that she broke up with you supposedly. Yes. Yeah. Both yeah. times? Uh no, actually I broke up the first time, she blo broke up the second ah, time. Oh, see that's yeah. something I didn't know. Yeah. No, Who's going to break up the third time? <laughs> I don't think they're getting back together. Is it over? How well, we have the rubber could match. You, how would Teddy get <laughs> you two back together if you just gave him a little time? Now you'd think you can't. Well, he can't even listen yeah. to Jimmy talk about the problem. He couldn't stay in the no, room. No, I listened. I didn't understand it. You I know didn't what? You should interrogate her. That should be what you do because maybe you'll get more. Because but alone, like a, in a situation like that. I'm not the kind of person that looks for reasons afterwards. It's if... Um, if you don't like me, I don't like you, and that's well, that. Well, then why did you break up with her? Oh, I don't even know. I don't. I just felt like, just depressed, and just felt like that was something that I felt like that was the reason why uh -huh. I was depressed, uh -huh. and then I became then more de even more depressed after you broke up. After we broke up, right. yes. <laughs> you heard the music. <laughs> I know. What's the music? You know, Fred, you kill it with the music. He does. He does. I could have. Uh, I was almost on the hook. Yeah, you know, I almost right started crying. Wait, I missed it. What did you say? I asked. So he broke up with Sarah the first time. Yeah, so you're getting more out of him than I did. Uh, you needed me I there. I told you that. I know. I needed you. Well, now that Howard's um, listening because it's on the air. Right. <laughs> no, I listened. I really did listen. And he I said, told shit. You, I could tell you everything he said Wait because he didn't say anything. I'm yeah. going to tell you what he just said. Yeah. So he was suffering a depression. Right. He decided it was the relationship that was depressing him. He didn't tell he, me that. He oh. broke yeah. up and then he got more depressed. Do you so understand? That's you missed why it. more or less. Yeah. More or less. Do you yeah. understand how bad that sounds? Like men, men want to have uh, the perfect woman, and in a sense, Sarah is beautiful, and 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 she's funny, Talented, she's smart, funny. Oh my God. great conversationalist, and you know we still get bored. This yeah, is what happens. It's not even bored, really. It's, and, but you're right, though. Yeah, it is. It's it's troubling because you think, oh, if I can't stay in a relationship with this person for a long time, right? That's there I isn't can't anyone. Do it. Yeah, right. and that's what starts to depress you. Yeah, you know yeah. exactly. And it's that heart starting again right now. I think part of your, I think part of your depression <laughs> is that you work insane hours. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was thinking about this. Even Jimmy's in town because they want him doing these upfronts. The upfronts, right? What upfronts are are we, where you go to New York. Jimmy lives in California, does a show from California, but you come to New York and all the advertisers are there, and you present the new ABC lineup for the fall. And this gets them excited about it. And Jimmy's sort of the host. He he has to get up and do a monologue and all that. I'm this. the monkey. I come on and I do yeah. a little something. Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking You're like... the entertainment. And I'm just thinking like, you know, and maybe I'm being an asshole about this, but like Jimmy's got to then fly back. they got to get him on he his show. He doesn't get a break from the show. Yeah. And, they, they, and then I, I realized you flew on commercial, right? 
Yes. They don't even make an effort to get you there, there and back on uh, uh, on a private jet, and you're doing them a favor, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you are you upset by that at all? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not accustomed to flying on the private jet. No, I understand so. that. Yeah. But, but I mean, on a, in a situation like this, they could have done that. But they could have. They Bob just Iger had a meeting the, and they decided not to. Bob Iger takes the private jet. Why is he so? Important? He doesn't have a show to do. Yeah. Because he he owns Mickey Mouse. I mean, he has like, yeah, Mickey but, Mouse living in his basement. But you having to get back into a live show is is uh, it's ridiculous. You probably can't even maybe get back there on time because the the airlines are definitely screwed up and slow. You might not even get back on time. Mm -hmm. You've got to make sure you've got to get back from New York from doing them a favor and doing the upfronts. And then you got to be ready to go as soon as you get off the plane. Yeah, but did you got on the private jet once when Nicolette Sheridan got sick, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's my point. You see, they'll do that for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those I still think lives. ABC doesn't treat Jimmy well. <laughs> You're right. I didn't no, they, know they, they were doing be all right. that. I mean, it's, you know, it's, they it's, don't treat you like a star. No, well, and and rightly so, and well, rightly so. <laughs> see that, but see, Jimmy has that low self-esteem. I relate I do, to yeah. that. You know, it's, it's hard. Here I mean, you are. You're a late night guy. I know, and I think a lot of it is. I think like if I think a lot of it is how you what you accept right off the bat. Right. And I'm real. I mean, I'm used to. You know, I mean, it wasn't that long ago I was the the, the sports guy in a radio show. You yeah. know, it's like it's it's hard for me to. Kind of take that mantle yeah, up. Letterman was a weather up. guy on the radio, and at you know in Indiana. I Letterman mean, figured out how to take the mantle. You've been on a, net you've been a network weather. late night guy for fucking seven years. I right? know he should yeah. be having airs at this point. You're ABC's late night guy. Yeah, uh, they don't treat you. I don't know. I don't like the whole. I don't blame thing. them. I really don't. Okay. You don't think you're worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny too because <laughs> matter of fact, Jimmy wants less money. Yeah, He's giving back. <laughs> but anyway, it's weird to. You know, to spend the weekend with Jimmy and then have him on the show and then say, you know, like even with the Sarah thing, like, I mean, I really sat there and I really tried to understand because I, I want those two back together and I would do anything uh -huh. if I could sort of mediate. But, but I, you still don't know what happened. I wasn't good with him with it. I was not. I was not good with you. I didn't listen. Because there are no, there's nothing, there's nothing really, that, there's no reason really as much as it, it's just a parting of ways. There wasn't a smoking gun like someone cheated. Or Can I ask you something? Yeah. No. Because yeah. I still don't understand that. If you don't want to answer, don't answer. Okay. Is it that you think the two of you are just not in love with each other anymore? Like like the love left? Well, they yeah. were in love at your yeah. wedding. You guys were all over each other at the wedding. Oh, yeah. Christ, I had to make out with my shitty food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really were. And but, it was like, yeah. So I guess at some point the two of you just realized, like, yeah, we like each other, but we're not in love with each other. I guess so, yeah. 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 Um, she decided that. Oh, she decided. <laughs> that was funny at the love, wedding. You're in love with her. No, no, I'm not. I told you. you. When it, yes, but yeah. when it's over for me, it's, it's over. over. You close yeah. the door. I close the door. Right. right. So but you, I you put my penis door. through the keyhole. <laughs> yeah, but you open the door. If he opens the door, he'll be in love again. <laughs> yeah. You close the door, you close the door, but you open the door again. Let's put it this way. When the door's closed on me, the door is closed. <laughs> right. Yeah, but Jim, the door. Jim, for every door that closes, one opens. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And the yeah, one you better so open is you, the heroin are you door. you on a tear now? Oh, yeah, I'm on a real tear. <laughs> He's fucking all of Hollywood. He's having sex with Cousin Sal. Let me tell you what I did last night. Here's He's having homosexual incense. I went to dinner with my friends Alex and Martha Wallow, who listen to the show, you know, yeah. and oh, yeah. uh, had a huge steak, and then um, almost was pretending to make conversation outside the restaurant where I was almost certain I was going to shit my pants. <laughs> and then I got in the cab and desperately tried not to shit my pants, and then thought, it might, you know, it might be funnier for the show tomorrow if I did shit my pants. <laughs> who cares about shitting in a cab? You've never done that? You mean you, you, mean you had uh, a big steak? Yes. And, and it immediately you... it became it an angry ball of shit. Jim, you're not a New Yorker. <laughs> Sometimes you shit in a cab just to make it smell better. <laughs> and, then you wanted to, and then you wanted to take a shit. And yeah. why didn't you do it at the restaurant? Or are you too embarrassed? Oh, Oh, no, no, not at the, yeah. The rest, plus, everyone knows going to, I come out sweating, and I <laughs> take off most of my clothes. The whole so then I get upstairs, and and I know this is going to happen because it, I just, there's a nightmare happening is that my cousin Sal has the key to the room in his pocket. Um. And there's no way he's just flipping the door open and, and letting me run right through. There's gonna Did be, you tell Sal you had a shit? Oh, I told, I told him I had a shit, and I realized that was a terrible wait, mistake. Wait a minute. You don't have your own room? You and Sal are in the same room? Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? This is getting kidding? worse. Sal's on the show. <laughs> they didn't get him a room? Well, they didn't, you know. I they didn't, don't <laughs> here. They tell you you can bring somebody out with you, you know. Sure, that is fun.
fucked. What are you doing? Well, the truth is, I brought two people. I brought Jill Lederman and our producer, so she got she had a room, and then Sal and I stayed. We don't mind. We like staying in the same room. <laughs> Holy mackerel! You really aren't in show business. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> really? Really? I used to get everybody at Mad TV their own room. <laughs> really? I'm not on Mad TV. Yeah, well, actually, Nightline. They've got four people in a room. Now. <laughs> Mark Bashir has like Smith. 17 people living in a room. <laughs> hey, well, would you? So, 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 did he get the key open in time and you took the shit? He did, but he, there was some torment time where he held the key up and showed it to me and waved it to me, and I was like, "Open that fucking door! Will you open that fucking door? Or oh, you're fired! <laughs> We're gonna shit all over you! Don't make me <laughs> shit in Jim Belushi's room again! <laughs> That's right. Would you have Sarah on as a guest on your show? Um, not right now. I don't wow. Think. Eventually, maybe. Wow. <laughs> really? Is that wow. Inter is that interesting? Yeah, that is yeah. interesting. Not yeah. good enough. We're just book, really no, booked no. up. No, no, what are you talking about not good no, enough? No, it's not not no, good because enough. she's doing every other show. She's busy. <laughs> There's no openings at your uh, show? You know what? We've got a lot of bookings right now. And, no, um, I don't know. I just think it might be... <laughs> awkward. <laughs> But it'd be fun. Might be more unpleasant than it would be worse. Sarah, there's a very funny stripper why? I met who's doing a set. Why would it be unpleasant? Uh, well, why do you think? Because you... But, but she was... Listen, when you were going out with her... Yeah. She was on the show like every week. Well, not that much. <laughs> I mean, yeah. a lot. She was like yeah. your brother Theodore. <laughs> <laughs> and now all of a sudden there's no presence of her like she was yeah. doing. The, uh, well, it's not like people Damon. like, where is she? I mean, she was on maybe twice a year. I mean, it wasn't Is that, like is that true? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought well, it was more. But she was no. on in the time that you two got back together. Um, yes. She was Listen, on, I've yeah. been on five times and twice when I was on, Sarah she was on. Was on. <laughs> is that right? Uh, at least once. Oh, well, she was on a lot. You know what, Artie? Also, though, you have to understand that we're not going to put you on with just anyone. <laughs> we're not going to put you on with Jennifer Aniston because there could be an incident. <laughs> like you never have Jennifer like Aniston. You could eat Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> 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 oh, and I I, 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 actually, he's right because that Candace Bushnell brought has a hit out on me. Hey, right that's right. <laughs> Dom, do you want advice? From, do you want relationship advice from Dominic Barbara? Oh yeah, of oh, course. The guy who's dating his ex-wife for the third time. <laughs> Videotape your breathe up. I was having dinner with uh, with Jimmy. Uh huh. And we talked about Dominic, you know? <laughs> yes, we I was did. telling him Dominic's history with his mayday, wife. Mayday. And it was like, Jimmy couldn't believe it. I know, he, nobody yeah. can. Uh, yeah, Jimmy? No, yeah. Well, first of all, at the wedding, Sarah, Jimmy, and I had private time where we spoke. <laughs> we did great. So I feel like, you know, I have an insight, and I, and I, uh, I would offer my services as a marriage counselor, if you like. Yeah. <laughs> what is your insight? Get a big plate of macaroni. You know what's disgusting <laughs> about Dominic? He probably didn't talk to anyone at my wedding unless they were famous. Right. What's the insight, <laughs> That's mister? Thing. Like, he's such a star fucker. <laughs> no, yeah. I have no insight. It's always fun when Dominic's so. looking over your shoulder for, You're like, Chevy Chase talking. or something. Yeah. Well, all right, Dominic, thank you. That's your buddy Dominic calling yeah. in to say. But the table we were at was funny because Jimmy, I was sitting right next to Jimmy and Sarah, and they were like they all, were over, all each over each other. We, we had been together, back together for like days at that point. I know. Yeah. And Chevy Chase kept yelling out, you want to see my cock? <laughs> yeah, that was uncomfortable. I tell you what, the, I, the, the most awkward moment for me at the wedding was I already got up to make a toast. And his dessert was there, and this dessert was delicious, you know. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm watching him, and I'm seeing him making toast, and I was, and his dessert sitting right next to me. I finished mine, and I was like, "Am I going to eat our dessert?" <laughs> and if, if that happens, is this going to be, a, is this going to be an incident? I, mean, I don't know. Absolutely, that. on the show, absolutely. So I decided not to eat Artie's dessert, and but Artie never made it back to the table and to eat the dessert and the waiter came and took it and I almost oh. tackled him. I, for, the first time the waiter came I was like, you know, that's Artie's dessert. You might want to leave that there. And so the guy like left it and then the next time I, I felt like I couldn't say it again because it was clear I was drooling into the whatever, the creme brulee or whatever it was. What it was. Why, yeah. did, why did the um, waiter take my scrambled eggs away? <laughs> he took the dessert. You know, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy said a few words at my Wedding. Yeah, he was, was very funny. He was very funny. Uh, you know, Artie said a few words, but Jimmy said a few words, and then we um, we hung them up. He got them for us. And, yeah, uh, they were great. Yeah, I loved really what good. you said. I had them. Uh, I had a calligrapher write it out, Ooh. and it, it's some of it is fairly profane. And calligraphers, as in general, are not. Um, They're usually sweet, demure. Not the most fun-loving yeah, group. Yeah. yeah. So this is middle-aged woman. Never seen this so stuff. You, is this really? Do you really want me to write this? Uh, yeah. Like, just yeah. Just write the thing, will you? Can I? Admit something to you, Howard. Sure. Uh, that pissed me off. What? Because. All right. What pissed?
pissed you off. I, I you know, I, I obsessed about the toast for the dessert thing. <laughs> that too. <laughs> I obsessed about this toast forever. You know? Yeah. And um, I didn't think anyone else funny was going to talk. You know, <laughs> maybe like you know, it's easy to follow. Maybe you know, someone who's not well, a Chevy comedian. Chase. Well, well, you know what? I didn't know Chevy Chase was speak either. Uh-huh. But like Jimmy no gets up. Did. Jimmy gets up first. <laughs> And kills, and I'm like, oh fuck, you know, I gotta follow Jimmy. Oh really? Yeah, well, I, I, well, I didn't know. Follow I didn't him know, immediately. I didn't know Jimmy was gonna say anything. Actually, I oh, guess no, you, you must have arranged that with uh, Mark. No, you guys asked me to to, to no, do No, I that. thought Mark arranged that. Beth, I think, asked me. Yeah. Oh, Beth did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Do you listen to any oh, no, conversation you know you have with Jimmy? You're right. Mark did. <laughs> Mark did ask me, but I assumed you guys asked Mark. You no. didn't know anything oh, about it? Oh, I didn't it? even realize that, actually. Because it was no. beautiful. I never. I definitely would have checked with but, you if I'd done that. But I didn't like speak it. immediately after that. Yeah, yeah it's I, just I, the mentality of a comedian. Yeah. Like It's always hard to, like, you know... It would, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I wasn't really mad. You but. feel that Jimmy was outshining you that night? No, no, I said... Look, I just didn't think someone else funny was going to speak. Right. You know... Yeah. I, I, you know, that's uh, comedians are assholes. All yeah. right, it's, next I time, Artie, and I was rooting for Jimmy the Bomb. You'll be the only one. <laughs> you'll be the only one. The next wedding? <laughs> How is the next wedding? Next wedding, you're going to be first. You're first up. You're headlining. <laughs> oh, great. That's it. You're going to get someone funnier like Ted Koppel or something. <laughs> So, yeah, but you should have followed Chevy. Why didn't you follow oh, Chevy? Well, Chevy Chase was going to say something. Why is everyone pretending that was a nice speech at the wedding? That was a horrible it speech. It wasn't even called for. You didn't like Chevy's speech? Because <laughs> I want to like Chevy's speech. Because I want to be in Cops and Robertsons, too, unlike you. <laughs> I have heard that everyone at my wedding hated Chevy Chase's speech. Yes, yeah. I thought it was funny. I no, did. you did not. <laughs> Jimmy. You did not. I thought it was funny. I swear <laughs> to God. I Donald think. Trump <laughs> leaned over to me and he said... I remember that guy had a TV show for two days. Yeah. No, and I know he, he was, hated him. Trump you know, doesn't remember your good shit. Like he's not gonna say I remember Fletch. Right, you know, he no, does. He likes I negative. I remember he had a show for two days. In fairness to Chevy, although I did enjoy watching you stand there with the pretend smile on your face through the whole thing funny. with the glass in the air. But <laughs> nobody knew what he was I know what was about. happening. Is he didn't know? He, he didn't understand. He doesn't. He doesn't really listen to the show, and he right. doesn't know what you're about. He thinks that. You, that the way it oh, this is Howard Stern's wedding. I should say cock and penis as many and, times yeah, as yeah, possible, yeah. and everybody. That's will love a good it. analogy, uh, actually. I, I understand. But that. what? Ha- but it, it it just it was just crass. It just but, but there was nothing it, personal or anything about it, and it was uncomfortable and crass. Right. He wasn't supposed to get up and say anything. No, I mean you don't know the man. I don't know Chevy, and Chevy got up. And uh, started saying that I used to fuck him in the ass and college yeah, right, or yeah. something like that. And, and I thought it was And humorous. that's not true, right? I don't think so. Oh, oh, I mean, it's true, they I couldn't understand. have been in college. <laughs> I don't remember every guy who fucked me in the ass in college. I mean, listen. <laughs> I don't specific. think you two were in the same year. Yeah. Thing. But, yeah, but I think I Chevy is... fucking the older guy, so... <laughs> Chevy, yeah. I mean, is a funny... I mean, I think Chevy Chase is great. I, I love right. his movies and stuff like that. It's just that was one of the worst... And I've been to a lot of weddings... He wasn't prepared. It's one of the worst toasts. And the guy co-created Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Nobody asked him to speak. But also, right. I think what it was, there were a lot of young, hip comedians there. And I think Chevy... Name two. Uh, Artie <laughs> and Jimmy. <laughs> I, think, I think that he was... Young hippie. I think he wanted to appear to be edgy. Oh, and, really? And, and useful at the I think wedding. it was for you. I don't think he cares yeah. about impressing us. But no. you know what I think also? I think that when you're a celebrity, there's this idea that everyone wants to, you know, that you're doing people favors. Like, of course, I'm here. Like, for instance, Billy Joel is there. He knows everyone wants to hear him sing. Right. So he, right, he, he right. you know, gives us, throws us a bone and he sings a few right. songs. Right. And that's the, like the cool thing to do. So I think Chevy was like, all right, I'm here. Obviously, everyone wants to hear me say a few words. <laughs> Nobody wanted Clearly, to hear it. So I mean, now, why never, did Ronnie the limo driver sing? <laughs> right, never listen. a guy reading a room more wrong. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> is, Jimmy's going to hang out with us all morning. He's going to be yes. here for a while. Ben Stiller is waiting in our green room. Oh, he is. Yeah. So uh, what we'll do. What Fuck he's him. saying is a bigger star has now. Good. No, Jimmy's hanging up being Good. part of the show. He'll be here during the Ben Stiller. You can interview. sit okay. there while Ben is. Right. If Ben be Stiller's sitting here and Adam Sandler comes in, we'll have Sandler. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see Ben. I haven't seen him in a long time. He has a new movie out. We will talk about. But first, I'm going to take a break. By the way, I recommended this movie that you and I watched this week, and when the devil. Oh yeah. No. Before, the devil. Before, the devil before the devil. Before the devil. Before the devil. Knows knows but you know, even you hadn't it. seen that. No, and even I watching, met Jimmy. Yeah. No, no, I hadn't seen it. Even watching a movie with Jimmy, Jimmy didn't give me any feedback whether he liked the movie or not. How did you think? The movie I liked was? it a lot. It was you great. Yeah. It? You, we, you, you were not having a discussion with me after the movie about the movie. 
Well, I, I, you know what? I felt like we had a lot of discussion actually during the movie. So Did you, you guys talk talked a lot during the movie. I was, uh, you were almost like a black person during the movie. I mean, without the, <laughs> no offense, Robin, but he wanted to throw you out of your own was, theater. There was a lot of. <laughs> Again, he was almost talking. like a black person. He robbed you. Can I say something? Uh, I never yes. talk during movies. Oh. Again, I felt pressure because Jimmy yeah, was there. That's that I not should... like you. I didn't mind it. I just thought it was funny. I just, I can, I just was imagining you and Beth together watching movies and you like commenting to the movie because Beth didn't say anything. Really. No, what were she, you talking about? I There were points in the movie where I needed to say something and to make, make my presence known so that Jimmy wouldn't bump And out. you're being a hypocrite because you hate that more than Absolutely. anybody. But I hate having guests when I feel pressure because, yeah. No, because yeah, yeah. I felt... You know, well, I thought he was a friend. Why are you so pressured? Because I felt that like Jimmy would be saying, gee, I came all this way and now we're watching a movie. I think we what should it be is, sitting and talking. We, we don't talked s- enough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many hours can I talk? Howard, would, Howard wouldn't know a friend of it crawled up his ass and built a camp. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. As a matter of fact, I mean, we, were up till, we were up till midnight on and Saturday night. And that's I was like, oh, I, I was like, oh my God, I'm up late. I'm going to get sick. I'm going to have a sore throat. What? Now, you guys love the movie. Can you recommend the wine you had? We had wine. Yeah. Yeah, we did have wine. Oh, my yeah. God. Jimmy, you're, you're just too Not much. in the movie theater. You no. have to not come back. <laughs> I know. I realize that. Uh, not in the, the movie way. theater. Did, did what a house. Favorite? You didn't eat the, um, the complimentary bagels out there because those were for Ben Stone. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, good, all right. All right, right. Listen, I've been trained by ABC. It looks pristine, I hope. I, I had horrible fears. You know, in the green one, we put a few bagels for Ben Stoll. I said, oh, Jimmy's going to think they're for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, what so, do you think uh, this is? Why, because he's Jewish? You had to put bagels in yes, there? Ah. 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 He's half oh. Jewish, half Jewish. Oh. It's Jimmy, New York. Did you New get your York. whiskey and bacala? <laughs> uh, next, uh, Ben Stiller will be here and his cousin Ira. <laughs> I want to talk to Jimmy. And Jimmy, after Ben's interview, I do want to talk to you about how many family members work on your show. Okay. Okay. Right, let's take a break. Ben Stiller is next right after these words. The Howard Stern Show. Here's Gary Garver with actor Charlton Heston. Mr. Heston. Mr. Heston. How are you doing? Can I ask you a couple of questions? Sure. Uh, what do you think about what happened in Denver? Oh, I'm doing that in Denver next week. Are you concerned with the president sleeping around? Good try. Can I ask you one more question? When you hear of all these little kids shooting each other with guns, how can you still be in support of the right to bear arms? Talk to the founding fathers. That's enough. Do you ever get drunk and pretend you're Moses? Can you pro- please yell out, get out, get out of your hands, you damn dirty ape? Thanks, Mr. Heston. <laughs> Bex beer, yes, love it. Bex beer, love that, love that beer. Can I say? You you drink beer? I do. I drink a lot of beer. I like Bex. Yeah, it's a good product. Memorial Day weekend is approaching. You're busy making plans with family and friends to spend time outdoors. And you'll be looking for a beer that everyone can enjoy. And, of course, that beer is Bex. I was going to say Bex beer. Yes. Give the Bex family of beers a try. Yes, there's a family of beers. Is there? There is. There's a bunch of them. And Beck? The flagship of the family, Bex Pilsner, has a balanced malt character and hop bitterness making it the perfect complement to the bratwursts, kielbasa, and hot dogs you've got on the grill. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do make that stuff. If you're looking for something a little lighter, pick up Beck's Premier Light, only 64 calories. 64 calories. That, I lose 60. I burn 64 calories opening the bottle. That's right. <laughs> Bex, yeah, yeah. That's why weight. you can have another. Exactly. <laughs> Find the Bex beer you're craving. Visit BexBeer.com. I didn't even know there was a BexBeer.com. I'm going to be on there. I'm going to make that my home page. <laughs> you know the BexBeer.com is my home page? I'm That's putting right. that in yeah. my fave. Uh, click on the retail locator. Discover the taste of Bex beer. Bex. Thank you. Why don't we get right to Ben? He's hanging sure. out there. I mean, do, do you have to do all the... the don't shtick? have to do anything you don't want, man. Uh, like hanging out with Jimmy. Is, 
Call yeah. the Howard Stern yeah. Show. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Kimmel is here, and now Ben Stiller, who stars in Night at the Museum. I haven't seen Ben Stiller in years. Well, this can't be called Night at the Museum. It's um, got to be two or two. something. No, like it that. is not Night at the Museum. Uh, Hello. Hey, Ben. Hey, hey look at you. you? Battle of the Smithsonian. That's, a, that's what it's called. Is that what it's called? How are you? How are you doing? Good There's to see you. There's an argument about the name of your film. It's been a long time. Hey, Ben. Nice look at how skinny you, you are. Say, there's How's something going on in him. How's he's it going? extremely thin. <laughs> Robin thinks you're too well, thin. Hi, Robin. You look good. Uh, thank you. But I think you're too thin. There is a too thin. Uh, yeah. No, I was... Uh, yeah, honestly, I was... Oh, what? What? I was doing a movie and... You know, what is it? it an was, Auschwitz film? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you play a, a prisoner of... of the day, it was a remake of The Day the Clown Crowned. <laughs> you're I mean, remaking The Machinist. <laughs> <laughs> Have you intentionally lost weight? I lost some weight for this movie. Now I'm eating again, and it's all coming back. He lost oh, some weight okay. for this all show. Because maybe that I said Ben's hair is all over the, the place. The hair is all over the place. It's all. Robin has he looks problem. like Audrey Hepburn. Thank you. Robin has a problem with your hair. What's wrong with your hair? It's What's wrong with little, his hair? I just grew it out a little bit for the. I like it. For the movie. It looks good. It's all right. Bring it on. No, 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 no. He seems I'm, depressed. I'm, yeah. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. You know Jimmy. Can I always I look do at know you. Jimmy. Yes. I love Jimmy. You don't like Jimmy? Is no, I love Jimmy. You want Jimmy to leave? I'm happy that he. I felt good that you yeah, were here. Yeah, who's that guy sitting at the end of the couch? Can we bring cousin Sal sitting right in the middle? Ben, first of all, there's a bunch yeah. of things I want to talk to you about. Okay. Number one thing, we'll yeah. get to your movie. We'll okay. promote it. Don't worry yeah. about it. You, I know how to do it. I know. Okay. How, I know how the game is played. <laughs> I understand you're not here for your health. He made angels and demons number one yeah, last week. Yeah, he already week. looked so right. happy he was here. So uh, the first thing I got to tell you, Ben. Yeah. I haven't seen you in how many years? It's been a few years. All right. I, I went out to dinner with you. A friendship was forming. Yes. And then you disappeared in my life. I what know. happened? What went wrong? What did I do? I feel like you let the ball drop a little did bit. Did I? I do. I, I didn't want to. You were the last one who called, weren't you? you I feel called. like I didn't want to push it. You know what I mean? I didn't want to no. like be the guy I calling up. I like your wife. I, yeah, she's amazing. She's great. Jimmy and, uh, was just at my house all weekend. And I felt it when when there was no invite to the wedding. I felt uh... it. I felt like the ball. Had, no, no. I felt like we had lost. Maybe and we should begin a Facebook relationship. No, I don't understand Facebook. <laughs> you Twitter? I don't. I have a fake Twitter or a person. I, no, words, that, yeah. I, I like you. You're I down like you to too. Earth guy. And You're I didn't want jerk. Wanna... Yeah, thank you. You know, you don't say jerky things. <laughs> like Jimmy's a good guy. Jimmy Jimmy's comes to a my great house, guy. And Jimmy's not a jerk. It, you should go to Howard. It's great. You, can, you hang out at Howard's house. You never see him one time the whole weekend. Oh, that's such shit. <laughs> well, it's, it's so big. You see me the whole weekend. You see me the whole weekend. Listen, I'm trying. I don't want more friends at the house. Here's why you should hang out with Ben instead of. You should hang out with Ben instead of Jimmy because it's probably easier for you to be with someone who's more in your financial bracket. No, yeah, I'm not anywhere Jimmy. close to your financial bracket. And that's I, and not you, what I read. Are you and bullshit. You're and Mr. You, Showbiz. You're on the <laughs> Forbes. Let's not go there. No, let's not go. No, Come on. Me happened. and Jimmy <laughs> talked to those security guys. But you live <laughs> up in the. You still have the the no, high rise. No, yeah, yeah. Sky rise yeah. thing. But that's here's great. A, here's the, the thing. glass. <laughs> his glass domain overlooking the city. It's I very quaint. I have an it's apartment. A, <laughs> I mean, you guys pretend, I'm a man of the people. No, no, no. JD has an apartment. <laughs> it's <laughs> your <laughs> fortress of solitude above <laughs> Manhattan. Are you, are you, you saying he's like, where's the bat signal? <laughs> yeah. It's no, super me, cool. It, it just, it's great. Let me I understand that. something. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner no. Gordon is calling. I had Jimmy over the house. <laughs> yeah. And I love Jimmy. And this is like, is this like a mansion in the Hamptons or something? No, no. It's somewhere out in a small home. It's a cottage. <laughs> Jimmy came over. Jimmy came over. Right. And, you know, I said to Jimmy, I feel all this pressure because I don't want to leave Jimmy alone. He's come to see me. He's come to hang out. He's coming to uh, essentially, uh, I guess, talk or something. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of pressure in all of this, these friendships, these Hollywood friendships. <laughs> yes. There I'm is better pressure. off on my own. I mean, uh, you know, I'm a loner. But that's kind of how I feel yeah. with you, that I didn't want to, you know what I mean? I didn't want to, like, push the... Thing. Yeah, we were doing any... good, though. Yeah. I mean, we should have uh, maintained the relationship, but we fell apart. Right. You yeah. let it go. I, I do feel that. Late. It's now, not since too I late. saw you, you and your wife had how many kids? Two? Two, two kids. Yeah. Two kids. How's yeah. that working out? It's good. I like it. I like, like having kids. two better than one, for sure. Why is that? Because they keep each other company, they play together, and you feel it's like a family. It's People even nice. say that with dogs. If you have one dog, yes. you got to focus on the two dogs can take care of each other. Yes, and the second dog learns from the first dog. Right. Now, and or a child. Wife, you're still, you're still <laughs> or a child. We have three dogs, and the children learn from the dogs. And the second also. one pretty much it's takes good. care of itself. Yes. And, and it you're does. still sexually happy with the wife after all these years? <laughs> not or really, you, Howard. Yes. No. And before I say anything, we're not going to. Yeah. I got to compliment you on a previous movie. This okay. Tropic Thunder was the greatest. Thank you. The greatest. Thank you. We I were really, all I, talking about it before you came in. It is great. And that just, is really nice. Because that was a personal that. project, and that yeah. was a lot of years. Thank you so much. We couldn't believe it was your movie. Jimmy said he can't believe it got made. 
I mean, you can't I, believe it was his. No, I, I'm not I anything. It, it was very ballsy. You, you have to Thank really. You. Well, I, most people have seen it, but the blackface thing is unbelievably right. Incredible. ballsy. Incredible. And, Incredible. And, Nobody puts racism in a movie anymore. It sucks. Oh, it's, it's so, so good. goddamn funny. It is really. And I said the Jack Black speech. Yes. Where, oh my God. When he's on tied to the when tree. When he's tied to the yes. tree. The fake is movie incredible. trailers at the beginning. Were thinking. you shocked at Robert Downey Jr.? got nominated for that role well i was i was happy and right. uh, it was when we were making the movie it was almost like a little bit of a joke that we had that would be funny that if he actually ended up getting nominated because his character got nominated you know had won like yeah. five academy awards so that was a really kind of fun like it was great that it actually it actually happened out that way. Yeah, it makes you feel like you know a... you forget about the tom cruise thing i know cruise amazing get crazy. back get back to your marriage because yes. i haven't seen you so long <laughs> okay. we have a lot to get to <laughs> it's going well it's going well yeah. you're still in love even yes. in Hollywood, where you are a director, you could have your choice of all these different women. You still find sex with your wife satisfying, and you're still as attracted to her. Go ahead and comment on all those things. <laughs> yes, yeah. I would. I would say, you know, like of all the things in a marriage, I think that are challenging. Um, you know, your sex life—that's something you want. That I think you can't fake that, right? Right. It's just got It's either there, or it's not there. And they could fake Jimmy it. faked it for you. And of all, <laughs> and all like the things that you know can stress you out and problems you can have. And I think we're like any marriage we've had our ups and downs. And you know, uh oh, but, really? Well, sure. I Name mean, five any, downs. <laughs> what ups and downs have you had? What are just you any about? marriage you go through, you have your ups You're and saying downs. You're saying in your marriage, we just had our ninth anniversary like three days ago. Well, so that's a lot of years. Oh God. In other words, there were days you want to be out. Sure, there are days. I think the days we both feel like that. I really? Think that's, yeah. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever gone through the though. calendar each day and marked whether you had sex or not, and if not, what her reason for not having it with you was? I've gone weeks like that. Okay. <laughs> I've gone weeks. And is that normal? Because yes. I have done that. Jesus, Jimmy, what the fuck is going on with you? I, wanted, I, don't, mark, I don't mark them because it would be too depressing ben, to mark every... Did you hear when I had... Ben, I don't even know if you know about this. Yeah. I had a guest on. The, the guy Neil Patrick Harris, you know him? I, I know all about this. You do of know Of course about I this. heard about this. The Doogie Howser fruit. Are you kidding? How, how am I not going to hear about this? <laughs> yeah, he admitted this on my show. I know. I, what do you I mean? Know. It was my fault. I, but I, I thought it was a great thing for your ben, wife. Ben, you had sex with Neil Patrick Harris. No. I was going to say, what happened? <laughs> ben, t talk about this. Well, you talk about okay. it. Okay. Neil, Neil, Patrick, about. <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris, who is gay. I'm glad we're reviving this. <laughs> a good looking guy. No, this is important. Yeah. It's very it important. It's very important. important. By the way, another word for gay is Neil Patrick Harris. No, no, come on, come on. Let me talk for a second. Uh, this guy, he's gay. He didn't know. He wasn't sure if he was gay or not. He wanted she, to check it out. He was dating Ben's wife, who's a hot piece of ass. Not when they were married. No, no uh, that would be terrible. <laughs> but uh, be a better story. But but Neil Patrick Harris. I was be down. Him. He'll be one of those. So downs. he never had sex with a woman. He had sex with your wife. <laughs> Well, now, and I don't know if there actually was, you no, know, No, he says actual... it was coitus. <sighs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> and he said... It was grossness. He said, I, I knew then I was gay because his, if, this is one of the most beautiful women in the world. If I can't get excited over her... Oh. Well, he must have been excited. Yeah. Get, right? That's what he said. Yeah. Now, did you he, t don't, now what do you think of this? I, I, I'm, you know, I don't know what to think of it. I, mean, I don't know if it's a compliment, if I it's a it backhanded, whatever. I don't know, you know... I'm happy that he's happy with his own sexuality. Has she I'm glad told that he's you? figured it out. Did she break Has the news? She told to? you that she I knew that had... they had dated. Oh. I mean, I never like you know delved in for right. the details. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. I know what it's like. My ex girlfriend fucked Peter Allen. And, uh, <laughs> hey, can I tell you something, Ben? I, I feel like you know it's Neil Patrick Harris. Like I, you know, probably the jury was out anyway before he declared. Right. You know what I mean? Right. right. So it wasn't like she was getting big points for having I. You know, and he's a nice guy and everything. But it's like, oh, Doogie Hazard, Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whatever. <laughs> you know, that, that ribbing had already happened when we first met. It's like, was know. this before she dated Clay Aiken or after? It was after. <laughs> it was after. No, no. no, but in all seriousness. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, she has so, a thing going on with Adam Lambert. She has a did, did, she does. <laughs> did, it freak, did it freak you Who's out? Adam Lambert? Adam Lambert's guy. from American Idol. Yeah. Sorry. One of That's the a... finalists already. And he's a gay guy? Yeah. Well, yeah. he seems... He's, he's gay. Like he's, oh, there are pictures of him kissing men. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And I, I read in the paper the other day that he introduced somebody sitting next to him at some party they went to as his boyfriend. So oh, yeah. that's a gay guy. <laughs> so, Ben, in other words, when this came out on my show, yeah. did your wife have to sit down with you and say, look, 
We need to talk about this. Let's clear the air. Well, no, she she thought it was funny, and um, right. she mentioned it to me, and right. then I, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, that's that's, you know, I wasn't like, I don't know, it really didn't affect me. Had she ever heard his side of the story before? Because she probably was confused. She went out with the guy, and then he disappeared. I don't think he said that to her when they broke up. Yeah, yeah I don't know what the uh, did he break up with her and say, hey, I, I'm sorry. He never, no, gay. he'd never told her that that was like the turning point. He just I don't flew think away. He never said that was like, you know, <laughs> right? He just flew. Yeah. This explains all your how. I met my mother DVD. This also explains why Ben did not follow up with Howard to hang out. I mean, really, like, what, who wants to go through this on the weekend? Well, I remember the I last bring time... I it up if we were hanging out. It's nice that we've gone right back to the sex issue, though, after five years. <laughs> yeah. Well, is there anything else, really? Uh, no, how are your right. parents? They're good. They're, they're, good. they're still going strong. And yeah. are they good grandparents, or are they, like, most Hollywood grandparents? <laughs> they're, they're all phonies and fake. Well, they're not Hollywood people. They're right. New York people. That's right. They're Upper West Siders. Well, so you say they're, they're you not know? Hollywood people, but when you... You were a young boy growing yeah. up in your home. You, have, you came from a show business home, right. the great uh, Stiller Mira. Yes. And uh, you, you, there were a lot of parties at your parents' house. They, had, they had a couple of parties. They'd have, like, uh, New Year's parties and things. Here's like that. who would be at the New Year. Here's a typical New Year's party when Ben Stiller was growing up. He had to go into show business because he would go to these parties and realize, I could do this if these people could do it. Here, I'll give you a list. Some of the who were some of the people that you used to meet when you were a kid? Wasn't Ronnie Dangerfield always hanging out at your house? And he was there a little bit, yeah. That's right. And you saw his uh, penis at a very young age, didn't you? I don't recall that. I Did thought I? his balls and penis were always hanging. Oh, out I row. saw them at an older age, actually. Oh, I had a did. meeting with him once. At the <laughs> Emily yeah. And he was in a robe, and it was hanging. Oh, yeah. My Every but that's like I par know. for the course with Rodney. <laughs> right. You know. Everybody. Everybody you're in the club. <laughs> Here, I'll tell you well, something. You my balls. There's a sign Imagine of affection. Imagine this. Your parents had a New Year's party, yeah. and at the time, William Hurt was there, Sigourney Weaver, wow. Kevin Spacey, Harvey Keitel, and Andy Kaufman. Wow. Andy Kaufman was not at that party, but he came to, uh, I think, a Passover Seder once. Don't you think, as a kid, this had to be almost unbelievable to you? Of course you had to go into show business because... That's a great house to live in. I mean, it had to be the most exciting thing, yeah. but it had to yeah. be intoxicating. Well, that, that particular party was because my dad was doing a play with all those actors. They were doing a play on Broadway, so they came and they hung out. And it was exciting. Yeah, it was really, it was great. And then you said to yourself, in order to be in favor with my parents, I need to go into show business in order to win their love, in a sense. Basically. Yeah. Am I, I right or am I, I wrong? I think you might be right. Yeah. I think I you might have just solved the Shrink's couch. The only thing that's weird is, therapy. weren't you in your 30s by the time Andy Kaufman was famous? Me? Yeah. I'm not... What am, how old are <laughs> What? No. What are you, I was a kid. Years old? Yeah. I mean, he was, I mean, it wasn't like Rodney Dangerfield. Or, no. Whatever. No, he was happy. When was it? Like 76, 77? Oh, yeah, the mid-70s. Like Night at the 12, Museum. 13. Night yeah. at the Museum made some ridiculous amount of money, mm -hmm. like $574 million. Do I have that right? You have it pretty close, it seems, if you know the exact number. So <laughs> this, uh, so this, am I down to the penny? I was just guessing. I was ballparking. J.J. <laughs> Abrams like, has yeah. to blow him because he's good at this. <laughs> oh, I got an email from J.J. Oh, what is he? Say. Well, you know, J.J. Abrams was here, and I yeah. saw the uh, the uh, Star Trek uh, in preview. I love the new Star Trek. It's fantastic, yeah. right? Okay. So I see it, and he says to me, uh, gee, I, I said to him, what do you, what do you think it's going to make opening weekend? Because, you know, he's neurotic. Right. And, I, and, I, and I said to him, uh, you know what? I'll give you the exact number you're going to make. You're going to make $79 million. He says, if we hit $79 million, I'll come on your show and blow you. <laughs> Guess well, what they made? Guess what they made? Seventy nine. Oh, they made seventy nine million. Wow. Well, he wrote me a note. He goes, "Oh my God." <laughs> I said, "I can't wait for my blowjob," <laughs> and I'm still waiting. That the good thing is, JJ. Great image. JJ could. JJ Abrams and is Howard Stern <laughs> well, engaging in oral sex. It would be so great if he actually went through it. <laughs> <laughs> You it are and you, I don't care. I'm the guy. Are you <laughs> sitting down? Are you standing up? How are you getting No, with JJ, JJ <laughs> could stand. Stand, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you couldn't get a blowjob from a nicer guy. <laughs> why, why, why a better blowjob? Yeah, I'm no sure. No teeth. You couldn't get a better blowjob from Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll see what happens. <laughs> what did your wife say about the sex with him? Did she say it was horrible? With JJ Abrams? No. <laughs> okay. Neil Patrick Harris. What did she say? Um, <laughs> She I, have, you know, she I honestly, say something. I honestly have not, you know, gone there. Would you I bring her in here? Next I don't time? want it. Yes, she's in California. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> thank um, God. I, I no, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to know. Or she said, I think she might have said it was like whatever. It's like what you would think. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I wouldn't ask my wife. Yeah, yeah. you, you don't want to lie. lie to if my it, wife had well, sex with a fruit, what if she said you don't want to know when your wife had sex with straight guys, let alone gay? You don't want to know. You won't let me say faggot. I don't know anything. Why do you have to say anything? 
anything. Be but, quiet. Over but uh, <laughs> fine. What if she said he was the best lover ever? Better than oh, you? Oh, he was yeah, really good. What if anybody said that, that about no. anyone? It's a terrible thing to tell your husband. You should always lie and say exactly. you are the greatest. Lover. You're the biggest. Yeah, there's no way to answer that question other than the, the hardest. Right. Is that why Sarah you broke up? She did not say you were the hardest. least gayest. Yeah, she was. She lied and she told me I was. That's right. Yeah, she did the right thing. Are you thing. guys not together now again? Apparently. Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry about this. Okay. You guys are a great couple. Well, I'm not sorry. anymore. I they were a great couple. They are though. Now they're we're average incredible. singles. And she and, <laughs> and she and she broke up with him. At least yeah. Well, that was the second sense. time. Let's be that honest. Like, it really that makes sense. But you guys have been on again, off again for a while, right? Well, just one time, and now okay. we're back. I see that it's turned back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's good at that. He's, a terrible he's thing. a flex. <laughs> Jimmy found out she had sex with Richard Simmons. <laughs> yeah. We broke up. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, wait a second. First of all, we were talking about... At least you guys can go through it privately. And <laughs> oh, you, you missed the last segment. <laughs> When you you wrote that movie, Tropic, Tropic Thunder, Thunder. Right? Yeah, with, yeah. With a, yeah, with a, with a couple other guys. What yeah. do you do? You, ha you had the idea. You said this would be funny if we made a movie about this. I had the idea like 20 years ago because I had a little part in Empire of the Sun, the Steven Spielberg movie. That, Where he yelled at you, That right? Christian Bale was in. Yeah, right. as he, a kid, yeah. Did, young Christian Bale. Did he yell at you? He yelled at me because I yelled cut on a shot. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was yeah, it was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I didn't, you I just was, felt it was done. <laughs> what, you were a struggling actor at that point? I was a struggling actor. He gave me my break. Steven he gave me, Spielberg. Yeah, he saw me in a play. He hired me as a, in a small part in this, playing a prisoner of war in this, you know, right. World War II movie. And uh, we were in Spain for about two and a half months in, in a prisoner of war camp they built. And uh, there was like a long shot where Christian Bale went and caught a pheasant out in the reeds and brought it back into the uh, American prisoner of war barracks. And it was like a eight minute steady cam shot where it just you know at the end of it we were in it and i screwed up my line at the end of the shot and i said oh i'm sorry should we i guess we should cut <laughs> after eight minutes and i heard like this sort of like like this there's a silence and then like from outside where all the you know monitors were i said what 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 did, what, what did he say <laughs> I mean, what? You never yell cut. No, you never yell cut. And uh, Steven Spielberg was upset with me. And he never put you in another movie. No, he didn't. You're I mean right. that you... We're, we're, we're friendly, and uh, he's been very nice to me over the years, and he actually produced Tropic Thunder, his company, but... Wow. Yeah. Did you, when, you, when he produces Tropic Thunder, do you have to go to him and present the idea to him? Yeah, well, it was his studio, so they, they financed the movie. So is there a pitch meeting where you stand I gave, in I, front of Steven Spielberg and you say, here's my idea for a film? I gave him the script. I gave him the script. And he liked, Full, and he liked it. Script, yeah. And he liked yeah. it. He, he, reads, he reads things. He likes Did them. anybody try to say to you along the way, you can't have a white guy in blackface? There was a little bit of a question about it. You really? Know? Yeah, but, but not as much uh, as you would think, actually. Yeah. You know? And even in your early career, I didn't realize you were mm -hmm. in a, a lot of films, or you were up for a lot of films that you didn't get. Like, you, you, you auditioned for <laughs> Platoon, right? You were trying um, to get in the movie. I didn't even get an audition. I had, a, uh, I had what they call a look-see, I guess. What is that? I just looked at you. A little meeting with uh, with Oliver Stone. And it, it didn't go well. No, he he looked at my headshot and he, he said, no. Ben he yelled cut, no, he said, and that was right. the end of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not for you. He said, yeah, I, heard about you. I heard about you. You yelled cut on Steven Spielberg's movie. You know what the best part, even even better than the blackface thing of Tropic Thunder, is the simple Jack. He retarded. <laughs> <laughs> he went full <laughs> retard. He went full retard. <laughs> which is fantastic. <laughs> You never go full retard. That's right. Yeah. All right, listen to me. Full commitment. All right. We have a lot to cover, so stop, <laughs> stop with all the frivolous bullshit. All right. Back so to Doogie Howser. Let's yeah. talk about your personal wealth. Here's what oh, I mean. no. Here's what oh, I mean. please, no. Forbes magazine estimates that you earn... Forbes. Forbes, which is the god of all finance. They know. Forbes magazine They never estimates. called me. They never called me for a comment or for verification. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Listen who's living the high life. Thirty-eight million dollars you earned in 2007. Holy shit! Your films have collectively grossed more than three and a half billion dollars worldwide, and you are on Forbes magazine's list of the top ten most bankable stars. You got to be worth a fortune. Don't come in here acting like every man. Um, I am not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, what's wrong with you? I mean, we are you humbled, Howard. Come we on, are humbled by your your wealth. I'm, no, that's it's all that, that's all. It's all bullshit. All that stuff is bullshit. But Look how at can it be bullshit? Well, oh, no, no. I'm, I'm obviously, it's you know, they, they. I don't know how they calculate all that stuff, but you know, like, what's your, you know, I'm not going to throw it back on you, but you know, throw you it make, back on me. you make a lot of money, right? Not really. I'll you do have it. This whole crazy. I don't know what your. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you call a lot of money? I don't know what your life is like. I don't right. know what you spend money. Are you going to die, Jimmy? Jimmy's just. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Falling off the couch. Ben, ben, put it this way. In 2007, you made $70 million less than Howard. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Exactly. You buying, and $37 you, exactly. million more than Jimmy. Did you buy a new house? That's exactly my point. What are you doing with all this money? Um, you know, Did you buy a new house? Um, I have the same house I lived in for 10 years. and very, yeah. Did there you really? buy the wow. neighborhood then? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, you know, I bought a couple of, you know, like, a little, you know, like, nice things, like a, you know... Car? Like what? Um... No, uh, we have a place in Hawaii that I'm very, oh. really, really, oh, really, that's really clean. That's where he yeah. hides. Well, listen, but after that's... Tropic Thunder, he can't live around black people. <laughs> How many of you bought a house in Hawaii? So that's good. So there are black people in Hawaii. So you're Try living next to a retarded Obama. black person. Yeah. Right? That's right. the Obama family. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's great. And then right. we've had that for five years. You know, that's an, uh, and that, that's like, a, you know, we got married there. I love it there. So, so. in other words, you're, you're, you're living a high life. <laughs> but out, of, out well, of the public eye. I think very fortunate. Fortunate, very, very fortunate. It's one of these McMansions in Hawaii, like a not a McMansion at all. No, no. Okay. on the it's beach not, though, you're looking at. It's water. a nice place. I'm embarrassed it. by your wealth. Is that what um, you're saying? I'm not embarrassed. No, I, I feel um, no. No, I just don't like to. T I don't think it's you know. Right. You, don't, you don't talk about how much. You know, I, every money day I do. I do. Howard, Howard. <laughs> I don't. I want to understand your thing though, because I feel like I think about your stock options and I think oh, about please. all of it. I try, figure, talk, I try to calculate it in my head. Don't, you, don't stock spring up the stock. It's please. thirty-nine cents. Right. So I'm, I try to figure out how that calculates into your personal. You know what I did. I added up all my stock options. You know I'm worth today. Ninety dollars. <laughs> if you add up everything I have in stock in this company. If I cashed wow. in my stock options today, I would owe Scott Greenstein two hundred grand. That's right. You know, at the end of each show. How is Scott Greenstein? He's uh, great. Does he come on the show? He's terrific. Never. <laughs> Do you know at the end of each show I roll around in my money? Right. <laughs> they, they wheel it in and yeah. I just roll. Wait, 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 around Howard. And... You know, we talk about you know like really enjoying your wealth. On Thursday, it was drizzling when we left work. That's right. And I see this yellow Ferrari with the top down. Driving through Manhattan, who's at the wheel? Doogie Hauser. <laughs> Tracy Morgan. Ah! He stole a car. Let me ask you something. You're doing, you're doing the press for your new movie. And by the way, the movie is. I got to get to the movie. Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian. It's opening up this weekend. I appreciate. Does that, the man. studio fly you out in a private plane? Um, sometimes. Did they do it this time? Um, yeah, they did. You see, that's what I'm talking to Jimmy. Jimmy's in town for the upfront. Mm -hmm. He's doing ABC a favor. Yeah. He had a fly commercial. Yeah, that's. I, I don't. I don't gross. You got to no you got to but you're but you're like a, a really big success for them. You are. You're a marketing guy. Apparently not. Apparently uh, well, not. Well, that's no. Ben, Jimmy yeah. has two roommates. Who's the guy? Who's the head of ABC? Who's Bob that? Iger is the president right. of the company, but I will say this, on the plane the stewardess gave me a bottle of wine <laughs> and, uh, that she painted herself. And also but Bob Iger wings. flies back and forth on a private jet. Right. Why, he's more important than you? Yes. Well, I guess Absolutely. so. Absolutely. And, yeah. and they're driving you back on a Greyhound bus? <laughs> I don't even believe this. But you're a real success story for ABC, aren't uh, you? Uh, apparently not. No, I, I don't Come know. Come on, I, you I, are. I, I really, think you're, like, ben, you calm down. He's no according to Jim. I don't need a private... Plane. I can be on the public uh, plane. I'm okay right. with it. Ben, know. here's my point. <laughs> He's got to go back to work they tonight. They gave me a, a bulkhead row. Did, did Jay Leno... When are you going back? I'm tonight. going back on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday? You're on my We're all going Wednesday. tomorrow. Oh, come I, on, I man. i got to do the upfront tomorrow. Ben's got yeah. the wings, man. Do you want to be on Ben's private plane? I do, but come I'd on. have to miss it's the not event mine. It's not mine. <laughs> that would be great. That would be a real fuck you. You should do that. Do. What are they going to do, Kent? <laughs> hey, now, Jim, on your flight back to L.A., Jimmy, will you elect to help the people in that row, or will you say fuck it? <laughs> Can I will, you I'll be the leader door? of the plane. Ben, will you fly Jimmy back? Can you wait a day? Um, I can't because I have to do it. I have to do a talk show in L.A. on Tuesday. Who are you doing? Tell me what talk show you're doing. Ellen. Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. Do you think that's really going to go well? <laughs> <laughs> Will you dance with her? I'll let you know uh, after. Uh, you know, I, I don't think you're allowed not to dance yeah. with her. You mean everybody has to dance? You're, you're a killjoy if you don't do it. <laughs> you're like, you don't like you're it. You're not a part of the party. I don't, I, I don't like it. You don't. Okay. No. I hired a guy who looked like me to dance the first time. And then I just was like, I Start can't dance. I'm not dancing. It's too embarrassing. Honestly, it stresses me out. You wouldn't believe me too. I, that I have to come out and do, do the little thing. Do you rehearse? It does, do right? Do you get in no, front of a mirror? No, but it's just you're expected to dance. Ben, you're expected to rebel. I, I want to get into this for a yeah. second. You're right. Ellen, you go on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Like, right. I went on that show, <laughs> and she said to me, listen, when you come out, let's dance, because I'm going to start dancing around. 
I, I, would, I would be mortified. <laughs> I, you're not a guy who but dances. Exactly. You make fun I'm not. of guys yeah, who yeah. dance. They make you feel like you're not, you know, that you're not going yeah, I think along the president with it. danced. So what right. are you, yeah. you well, going to you know, go over the top and, like, dance wildly? I mean, you're I just, try to do it in a way that, yeah, that it's ironic yet feels right for me. And <laughs> it's all like a self-justification in my head that ends up looking ridiculous. Robin, anyway. the president danced because he's a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> why, why won't you make a stand? I'm being serious now. Right. You've got, and you've, say no you've made enough to hit Alan. Movies. You've, got right. a, you've got a name, this business. But, yeah. Why don't you make a stand and say, no, I'm not. Stand there. Literally stand there and be the killjoy and say, you know what? I'm not going to dance, Ellen. It'll make the news. I think it's important <laughs> to make a stand. It's, it's you, you know what's hard is like you walk into the studio audience and they're all there and they're happy to be there. All yeah. the audience is so into being there. And, you know, yeah, but ben, it's you're, like not, you're being like a like not accepting them. Exactly, yeah. like you're rejecting them. Yeah. You're saying I'm too good to dance for you, or you know, like I won't make myself look silly or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's it, weird. They dance really hard and it's a bunch of like middle-aged women <laughs> dancing at like four in the oh, afternoon. It's disgusting. She, yeah. It's crazy. There's so much more dancing than you it's, see. Wow. On the it really? Does feel like yeah. you're like in a, a different world. It's the white soul train. It's a weird thing. But Ben, you're a big enough star where you could just give it back to her. Like if she makes you dance, the first thing out of your mouth should be about Portia the Rossi's pussy or something. <laughs> she <laughs> doesn't make you dance though. But Thank you. Okay that's that's a good dance. tactic. I'll, I'll, I'll someone, go for doesn't that. Someone, Thanks, Artie. Doesn't, I'll do someone, that. doesn't someone? Doesn't someone have to? <laughs> sure that'll work well for me. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Fire you from night in the museum? <laughs> doesn't someone have to stand up to her? Uh, I at think you have to try to stare her. You I know, mean, grab her by the hand and you whirl be a her. I think the agreement is a complicit agreement. If you show up on the show, that you're gonna play along with her rules. Ellen, I smell pussy. Did you burp? You know, Robin makes a really good point. Yeah. What if you could come out there like Fred Astaire? Yeah. You start to flip her around and you throw her so hard she just slams into the wall. <laughs> I mean, like, like, like just wing her. Like, right, like, she right could take it. She's a dude. <laughs> I guess I could do it. I don't know. So it's what's like, your game plan? What are you going to do? Well, now I'm going to think about it a lot. Yeah. It's gonna be, you're going to be in my head when I come out there. I know that I'm going to be thinking, wow. Well, you know, we're going to be watching. Doing, yeah. <laughs> we got to do it. Now, now I have to Honestly, tune in. Honestly, I'm, I'm going to probably do like a little, hey, you know. A little freestyle. Right. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> hey. Can you dance at all? Are you a good dancer? I'm a horrible dancer. Wear, I'm not a good dancer at do all. Do you want to rehearse like, here? I don't like dancing at all in public you're, at all. I don't like dancing in private that much. We can help you out. You could rehearse right here. No, <laughs> your humor is based on being self-conscious in a way. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, some of it is. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, like, it's kind of like, yeah. oh my God, I'm embarrassed by life. And, and here you're going to have to, and you really are stressed out about this, aren't you? About the, well, now you're making yeah. me even more. No, yeah, but, but I don't blame you. Sure, no, no, you're right. Be. It definitely is like one of those things I don't look forward to, for sure. Well, wouldn't it be great in a way if you trained, <laughs> like if you got one of those Dancing with the Stars type dancers and you did a black backflip and you yeah. you went wild and you really came that, out? Yeah, yeah. Pasa yeah. Doble yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What I, I like that. That would be so good. <laughs> take merengue lessons or something. And that's hard. That stuff is hard. Those yeah. people really, I don't even understand how they do it. You know what I would do if I was going on Ellen? I would go out in a wheelchair. That way you <laughs> possibly get me to She made Stephen that's Hawking dance. Yeah, you like, know, the fallback is always just go to the robot. You just go to the robot because that's the robot, the or one just or Vogue, own. yeah, right. do one of those things, exactly. or just punch her in the face. You so, know, one thing I have forgotten to compliment you on is, you know, wasn't it the Academy Awards where you came out as uh, Joaquin Phoenix? That was fun. That, that was, was incredible. That and the other good. great bit was at the Academy Awards where you were dressed in green, in all in oh, green yes. as a green screen. <laughs> the commitment because this the is a commitment. script. If somebody giving me the script, I says, "No way, I'm going to do this because this could, this could go horribly." Yeah, honestly, it's it great. Yeah. Thank you, thanks. It was but really fun. You were and you were nice. You emailed me and you said that I was could, nice. I, I was very, nice very impressed yeah. by that. I love when he hosted <laughs> last year and did all the Broadway that, that, That's one of those things where you're like doing it and you say, oh, this could be a funny idea. This will be funny. And then you get backstage. You're right right before you go on and, and you're in the go, green oh. unitard. And you go like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> the Oscars. Jesus Christ. Why have I? What is going on in I my know. life? I was fart man on MTV. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right? I was plenty nervous with that. <laughs> you get to that point and you're like, uh-oh. Oh, like this is for real. Okay. But wait a second. People are watching. I've learned something now in this little conversation. What? What you... Jimmy has uh, your email. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't have your email. You can have my email. Give me your email and I'll I will email. All right. I would like to be in on that loop. Yeah. I... <laughs> no wonder I have no friends. <laughs> now, Jimmy knows how to email. And, and I felt first... like we had like the Beth connection a little bit, you know, because yeah, of the movie. Yeah, right. And... So give me your uh, give me your uh, email and I'm okay. going to begin. The... I'm getting in on this. Okay. Okay. Now, what movie was Beth in with Ben? Uh, uh, flirting with disaster. Oh, wow, wow. A long time ago. Yeah. Now, 
Go back to Night at the Museum, the first okay. one I'm talking okay. about. Okay. Now, the new one is Battle of the Smithsonian. That's right. The new one makes a lot of money, like probably more than you even expected, right? You never know with mm. these films. You never know. You never know. Summer it's a big time. hit. Right. So now, is there pressure on you with this movie? Is that why you're out promoting? You're like, oh, my God, I got I to gotta at least I gotta duplicate what I did the last time. Well, the first one was interesting because it didn't have a, a gigantic opening. It opened right. pretty well, and then it just kept on going because right. the audiences liked it. So, and it also opened at Christmas time, and there weren't a lot of movies that opened after it. So, this one, the pressure is because it's the summertime. You try to, you know, sort of get as many people aware of it when it's opening. It's more because pressure. every week there's a new movie that comes out. Now, know. do you really still feel that pressure? You've had a lot of success. Yeah, of course. I yeah. mean, you feel it, but I mean, it's. I think the question is like what you do with it, and whether you, how much you care about it, mm -hmm. or you know, I think when you go through it so many times, you realize it, it's like there's nothing you can really do about right. it. Give it's me, out of your control. So give you me, give me the number you, you want it to do well. Give me the yeah, number you need to gross to blow me. Because <laughs> you and JJ can Beyond work. With, which... You can work the balls while JJ works the shaft. <laughs> That'll be great. It's every dollar and euro in the uh, world. It would make it easier uh, for JJ. Yeah. It would be nice Is it true that extremely Mickey... Jewish porn scene? I have to ask you a story because maybe I have this wrong. <laughs> yeah, very Jewy porn. Yes, what really happened here? A Jewish, Jewish porn. porn. Gay Jewish porn. <laughs> That'd be great. Imagine anyway. a porno of me getting a blowjob from JJ Abrams and now Ben Stiller. Now that's linked to the Oi. internet. That so, would be the only. Only time I would agree with that asshole who said you're one lucky joke. <laughs> That's right. Okay, listen to me. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. uh, because you're off track. And I'm going to okay. bring you back on track. Yeah, you want to know back. how much money the movie has to gross or to open or what? Okay, no, no. What I want to know is that did you on the first okay. one wasn't Mickey Rourke in the first one? <laughs> is that true? <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Rooney. Oh, Mickey Rooney. Okay, all right, got it. it says here Mickey Rourke in my nose. Same. They're the same. <laughs> Mickey Rooney. He's as tough. Mickey Rooney is as tough Mickey as Mickey Rooney, Rooney in the sequel. No, he is not. Is Why Mickey is Mickey Rooney, Rooney insane? No, he's not insane. He is. Um, he is. Uh, is Mickey Rooney insane. Did he tell you that? That, that Mickey I love Mickey Rooney. What? Tell, tell what he Mickey Rooney little... said to you on the set of your movie. What did he say? What? Didn't he say that Mickey Mickey Mouse, he named Mickey Mouse he for Disney? <laughs> yes, he claims that, that Walt Disney claimed Mickey, named Mickey Mouse after him. Mi right. Oh, so he didn't give it the name. He said that he like like Disney showed him a sketch of Mickey Mouse and um, said, I'm, this is my new character, Walter Mouse or something like that. <laughs> And he and Mickey looked at him and said, "You should name him Mickey, Mickey Mouse." And and Disney looked at him, Mickey, Mickey Mouse. That says, yeah. You know how oh. great this story was when it was Mickey Rourke. First of all, I got my notes. He goes, <laughs> yeah. "When filming Night at the Museum, co-star Mickey Rourke told uh, Ben he yeah. gave Walt Disney the name Mickey uh, Mouse." <laughs> Story. Much better story. I go, man, what a disappointment yeah. that never really happened. Now, now, isn't Mickey Mantle in this one? No, Mickey Mantle's not. No, but he, he Mick, named Mickey, Mickey Way. Mouse Mickey him. Way. Is right. All right, listen to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, how is Owen Wilson? You must ask that. Owen seems like he's doing great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw him for the press junket a couple of days ago. Owen Wilson, the famous actor, is a good friend of yours. Yes. You have an amazing amount of friends in Hollywood. <laughs> I mean, the list is No, sagging. I don't. No, what is the best part of being famous? Having famous friends, right? Um, uh, no. I, I, I don't know. Come on. That's well, you ridiculous hang out with question. What do you what think? Do you do? What's your, what do you, I'm going to throw them yeah, all back at you, How easy is, is it for you to hang out with famous people? I just have Jimmy. I, I feel, I'm going to guess it's hard for Ben to hang out with famous people because they all want to be in his movies, and it's a weird... It's a weird. I think it's a weird thing no. where you sometimes... No, that's that doesn't really that happen. That never happens? No, no but I mean, it, it's... No. It's going to happen now with Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy. I think Jimmy. everybody. Me? Put me in a goddamn movie. I can play black. <laughs> let's, let's see. Look at him. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Wait Your movie's yeah. based in 1838. Can... When you hang out I with Owen like Wilson. I feel like I've seen you do that. Haven't you yeah. just done blackface? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he right? has. Yeah. Yes. Many times. Yeah. <laughs> Only during sex. When you, when you, are you kidding? I did blackface on the Before, Petey Green show. Yeah. But, but <laughs> it was like career suicide. Uh, now, but, but, Owen, but Owen, like, I don't count Owen as a famous friend because Owen yeah. I've known for you know like 15 years it's just you know what do you mean you know him for 15 years I've known him for since the cable guy mm -hmm. 1995 okay. so when, when Owen Wilson is over your house what do you two do together I mean what what goes on 
Um, would he well, have he a dinner come party? over to my house that often. He doesn't. No, he's. Uh, you know, we we hang out. We see each other. What does uh, he mean hang out? I don't understand. We don't. I mean, since I, since I got married and have kids, and he's single, we don't like our our paths don't cross as much. I see. Um, but we'll have lunch together, or we'll or I'll go to visit him at his house, and you know he's got a nice place. And now he was supposed to be to play tennis, you know. But he was supposed to be in your movie Tropic Thunder. And he committed suicide, right? <laughs> he killed himself. I almost tried to, which is not funny, which is sad. Yeah, he didn't commit. Right. He didn't now, uh, uh, make it. So he couldn't be in the movie anymore, right? Yeah, but I'm Why not going to. No, not no, gonna no I don't, I don't, no, I don't no, want to make a joke. No, ben, he's a I'm friend of mine. I'm going to have to respect He's my friend, too. His... I'm sure one day you'll right. have to respect Yeah, you two will hit it off. You guys gave me shit for saying fruit. Wait a second. No, I'm saying that's a terrible thing. But then he can't be in the movie, and you have the movie all set to go. So what do you do? I mean, you're in it, panic. It was, just, it, was, it was a hard time, and the most for me, you know, I'm not. I don't want to talk about it. Understood. Okay. okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and talk about it. Anyway. No, because no, I'm going to just res no. But it was just it, the most important thing was just it's that a terrible you know, thing was for, was you know his you know his thing, and I just didn't you know the movie was totally secondary. You so. just wanted him to be well, no matter exactly. what. Exactly. Right. So that was it. Why is that a bad thing to bring up? Did I uh, commit a faux pas? You were asking about the uh, what a director does when one of his stars is absent. Yeah, listen, and can't do I don't film. want to talk about it either, but we have yeah. to. Right. <laughs> people, you know, there are young people out there who are hoping to be directors, and they're going to want to. <laughs> it's not nearly as bad as the Neil Patrick Harris thing. <laughs> I think it's ten no, times worse to have to dance on Ellen, quite frankly, than to talk about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> how about sitting right, next to right Jimmy there. for twenty minutes? Yeah. Yeah. But real life is always more important. So here it is. Yeah. I never. Um, I never know what to do in those situations when I'm directing a film. <laughs> I honest to God don't. What else is going on in your um, life? Not much, you know. Just uh, this just is the big movie. Out. So tell me about this movie. You're in. A, what are you trapped in a museum? <laughs> no, <laughs> and it's night. Are it's you nighttime. still the night watchman? No, I'm not. Okay. When, when, the, when the second movie begins, I, you know, I had these inventions in the first movie, like yeah. and, uh, and uh, that I wanted that like crazy inventions. So that's taken off, and I'm doing infomercials, and I'm like a like a Ron Popeil uh -huh. sort of. Uh, very successful uh, infomercial guy. Okay. Right. So, so I've left my job. I've left my job at the museum because things have taken off for me. How, so do, how do you get you, back yeah, to the museum? How do you end up back in the museum? Well, what at happens night. is they yeah. decide they're going to move all the exhibits from the Natural History Museum into storage because they're updating the museum with uh, holograms and interactive exhibits. So they're moving them all down under the Smithsonian in Washington to storage. They do that. They send them down there with the tablet that brings everything to life, right? right. And they get a call from Jed Owen's character one night that they've come to life underneath the Smithsonian and there's an evil Egyptian pharaoh played by Hank Azaria who wants to take over the world who's come to life so I have to go help them out try to save them. They great when a movie is real. The Arabs again. The Arabs again. And this is it big, is great when a movie is real. <laughs> this is a big special effects movie, right? <laughs> it's a very, yes, a lot of special Were effects. Were you able to work blackface into this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried. tried. I mean, why not every movie? I have tried to get nudity, blackface, and cursing in <laughs> When you have something that works in a movie, why not have blackface in every movie? Why would you give that up? I don't understand why people I know. feel they can only do it once. You know what? What? I, I think, you know, I think more <laughs> Jewish people need to do blackface and yeah. get it just, just well, really... Well, Robert Downey Jr. is now a black actor. Uh, <laughs> an honorary Jew, too. He is. Why couldn't Al Jolson be an exhibit? <laughs> <laughs> um, look, let me tell you something. I'm You're... excited I got to pitch the, the opening of the movie to you, though. Yeah, no, it's yeah. good. I like it. Do you, so this is going to be a big deal. Speaking of pitches, did you yeah. see Baba Booey's opening pitch? Uh, I didn't. Uh, you did not. No, oh, too bad. You, you know what? It'd be worse. Oh, it'd be worse if your wife fucked Gary. Ralph, oh, what do you want? Oh. The, the movie is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, see Ben Stiller in Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian, opening this Friday in theaters everywhere. This is a big weekend for Ben. He's very excited about it. He's in hell right now. Thank why? God. Why are you? Why are you? Uh, At least he doesn't hell. have to dance right now. You know. Is talk you, about our movie, Artie. In two thousand eight. Oh, you want to talk about a shit movie? What movie did you do? Me and, me and Ben did uh, Mystery Men together. Yes. Come on. I walked up to Ben to say he was very nice to me. Yeah. And I walked up to him to say, "How's this going?" And he looked at me like, "Oh." <laughs> did you it's know not a good experience? You it, knew it was going to be a bad movie when you were making it. It was trouble. It, it felt like the it felt like trouble when we were doing it. I played a guy. You had to see the scene. Talk about <laughs> yeah, movies. Where were you in that? Talk about movie? movies being real. I was Big Red, head of the Red Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so in the in the in the opening scene, which took a week to fucking shoot, I I have to. I, I, waste of time. I have to. Um, it costs probably seventy million to make. Dude, this wow, movie. lost and, money. That means lost money. And um, I come in and I'm I'm robbing an old age home. Right. 
and Ben plays a superhero, Hank Azaria plays a superhero, and of course the other superhero is of course William H. Macy. <laughs> and um uh so they all Attractive ki- group. They all kill me. License no. to print money there. <laughs> <laughs> they all kill me. I get hit in the face with a shovel by William H. Macy. Right. Hank Azaria puts a fork in my throat <laughs> and then Ben comes over and kills me by being really mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How, how did, what happens? You read a script, Laura. Right? Take me through that. Yeah. Okay, because already... Well, this is 1998. What does that right. mean? I don't understand. It means that um, it was a different time. You were insane in 1998. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just had... Right um, after that. It was the first movie that I did after There's Something About Mary. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, so, like, I, I think it was, I was excited that I was getting, you know, it, it offered this, like, super cool superhero movie. And it's a big deal for me, because yeah. Ben's now an enormous star. I think I'm going to be in There's Something About Mary 2 or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's so, what I think everybody thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, at what point, like, you read the script and you go, this is a pretty good script, it's funny. I thought it could be funny, and, uh, yeah, and then and Janine Garofalo, like, all these, you know, funny, funny people. people. She's and, always in yeah. huge hits. Yeah. And so, you, <laughs> and so you, you agree to do this movie, and then how far into the filming do you know, listen, I'm in a bomb, and this is terrible because I've done something about Mary, and I'm And you can't and do anything about as it. As soon yeah. as you looked on the call sheet and saw Artie Lang. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of goggles in the movie. Like, I'm wearing goggles. Weren't you wearing goggles? I had goggles on with red eyes in them. It too took like eight hours to get me outfit. It yeah. was awful. Too many goggles. Too many. <laughs> More than it usually takes you to get dressed. Big well, sets. I've always meant to ask Ben, did you have an insanely contentious relationship with the director? It didn't. wasn't a great relationship. Right. He was, was the a, director. He was a guy who directed commercials, and it was his first movie. And it was so weird. I think he was trying hard, but it just was not happening. I'm not. not like, look, I, look, I'm no comedic genius, but... Uh, like Ben and Jimmy, but <laughs> and Howard and Fred and Ron. But uh, I, I like there's something you just know about comedy. Like this guy, his name was Kinka Usher, and he directed those uh, those Taco Bell commercials with the little fucking with dog. The dog. Oh, so, I love those. Those. so he's like a hugely so cute. He's like, and he was I, look, he was nice to me. He gave me a part. In a, he gave me a part no. in a movie. And he's a very. I think he's a very successful insane. commercial director. Yeah, right. I he, went. Yeah. yeah, I went to his offices in Santa Monica. He had like a whole palace. He's very successful. He he was he was getting two million shots for like one joke. Like, right. Like he right. would always he would say now this angle now this and the worst way to fuck up a joke in a movie is too many like Do Peter many Sellers times. in the Pink doing Panther. It and doing it and doing they it. shot it like a play. You know. Yeah. Just now, let Ben, you're nodding. Is, is Artie correct? In he this? is right. He is yes. right. You know, um, sometimes on commercials they have a lot of money to do lots of different things and lots of bells and whistles. And I think sometimes the comedy is better if you just put the camera. And it was up. interesting to be on the set because Ben, I saw Ben and like William H Macy and Azaria going up to the director a lot and saying him especially William him. H Macy <laughs> William H Macy oh, yeah. was saying look no it, I want to do it this way and the yeah. guy was like yeah what by the way yeah everybody wasn't on the same page all the actors yeah. all the, yeah, but the guy hasn't bit. directed a movie since I think he yeah I think he's happy doing commercials I don't know I haven't talked to him since the I movie, don't know why so. he just didn't expand that Howard, thing. let me tell you something about <laughs> LA when when Universal gives you 70 million dollars to make a movie and, and the, first, the first weekend it makes 40 you're back to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of it, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Ralph. The movie is called Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian. This is a very big franchise. Yeah. And uh, all of Hollywood and Hope New York. Hope you're taking celebrates. care of it. I'm trying. <laughs> I actually, I'm very happy with it. What's the matter? You seem a little down. What's wrong? No, with I'm you? really you happy. No, I'm relaxed. Is this a new effect rela- or what? He's got a guy who should be I'm working construction you. yelling oh, fruit in his ear. You seem a little down. Really? No. Yeah, Jimmy, does he seem down to you? Does Ben seem down? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, it is. It's a little overwhelming. You don't know what the next horrible thing to come out is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm trying to go into like relaxed mode here, but I always feel. I always smile when I see. Always. I'm always happy to see your you. wife fuck, and then we yeah. move to like, what is this traumatic you know, syndrome? Hey Ben, cheer up! We could be on the set of Mystery Men. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. What's next? Mystery Men too. And yeah. Ralph's on the phone. It's even no, worse. No, I, I do never know the next thing that you need to know about that you're going to pull out of your hat. <laughs> but, but, but I want to know something because this gets into a, this gets into an area. Okay. As a director, yeah. Uh, have you ever had to fire an actor? Um. Because you mm. seem like a likable guy. Like, in other words, like I'm Like, he shocked. wouldn't fire anybody? Yeah, no, no, I've had to fire people. You know, not, not actors. I've had to, you know, I've fired, like, a production designer. Because uh-huh. like yeah. unless I'm reading you, you seem like a really genuinely nice guy. Like, 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 even not getting along with the director on that film that you were in with Artie, it would seem to me, like, just terribly painful. No, I mean, I'm like anybody. I can get in, you know, I, right. it depends. I know? never saw anything yeah. like an, an argument. Or, no, I just saw, I could tell Artie, that Ben though, might have been a Artie, we did get in, I got in, that... Everybody was fighting with each other in that movie. Right, right. right. The actors were fighting with each other. <laughs> I could tell. Yeah. God, why isn't we got into a fight? Of that? Remember in Chinatown? Were you weren't yeah. there in Chinatown? We were shooting a scene in Chinatown, and, and a bunch of us 
fact, who's got into a fight in costume. Right. And I'm dressed in like a leather duster. Yeah. And Phil Macy's dressed like a shovel guy with a, like an umpire. With a, with a, yeah, an, an umpire uh, and chest got, protector. Yeah, and we all got into a fight in Chinatown. I walked off the set in Chinatown. I got on the phone. I got on the phone with my agent and started complaining, like, in costume. It's so stupid. So, so uh, <laughs> Ralph, you might have a question. Go ahead. I don't yeah. want to keep Ben all morning. Go uh, ahead. I want to know why you guys sit there and pretend like you're not all loaded. I what mean, do you mean? Because you're all rich. And it, I don't know oh, you Ben's mean Ben. I, I thought you meant drunk. I thought you meant I'm yeah, drugs or whatever. Rich. Yeah. You know, like, you have to relate to the people or something. You all deserve it. Stop you're it, Ralph. <laughs> ben is embarrassed by his wealth. Well, well I don't like, know. You're how he's dressed. Yeah, but what? It's like a bag lady this morning. <laughs> but, like, what is the right way to talk about, you know, money? I mean, I think it's... Well, I was always... Like Donald Trump, movies. he walks in. You but you don't believe how much I've money I have. I've got everything. But no matter how much money you have, I don't think it's right you talk about it. Right, to brag. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Rub yeah. it in people's and I, faces. You have to sit there and pretend like you don't have three houses in Hawaii and stuff like that. He's got one house in Hawaii. All right, here's, some, here's um, what I heard. Here's, I told, some, yeah. here, here's somebody I, I think you didn't get along with. Okay, yeah. All right, here's a, here's a good one. I have another quick question. The, quickly, what is your question? How could you stand Janine Garofalo? Isn't she annoying? I love Janine. Janine's one of my oldest friends. She's a good friend of yours. Yes. Oh. These are stable of people that you that kind of came, like up, came with. up with. and Yeah, and right. very talented, and she enjoyed her on 24 this year. Is your best friend Tom Cruise? No. He's one of your best friends. He's friend. a friend of mine. He's what a, is, yeah. Now, what goes on there? Can you really be friends with this guy? He's a How'd great guy. He's a great guy. What do you do with him? Maybe I'll have him to my house. Because Jimmy, it's, uh, you know, I have to... <laughs> Jimmy's a little bit of a problem. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> has uh, Tom Cruise at his house. You do? I did. You know that. I you told did? You. Yeah, but yeah, I he came I over to my house. You told yeah, me I'm, not, you told I'm want, not allowed to talk about it. I want to defend um, uh, Tom Cruise to Artie. Artie has a story in his book about what a dick Tom Cruise was to him. On and Jerry Maguire, yeah. I and he was it, a dick. I find what it impossible to I believe. I find that hard to believe. Why? What, why? What's because impossible I'm, about it? Because he's unbelievably nice he's to what, everyone. Yes. Yeah, but not me. Uh, I'm the son of Jerry Maguire. But what's the common denominator? Ben was nice to me, a mystery man. What's the common denominator, What is it? What were you up to? I mean, what? I was on coke. Okay, well, but, 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 I was coked out. You didn't tell us but, that part. I think Tom was on AZT. Was no, like, but oh, oh, what? Oh, oh, damn, that's outrageous. <laughs> Artie, but could, no, I thought it, he said something stupid like, like that. Face. Isn't it possible? <laughs> isn't it possible that on coke? I'm just looking to get sued. Isn't it listen, listen to Jimmy. Did you could have been okay. The Artie maybe wasn't was, was was maybe there was a reason you were unwelcome in in that place. No, I was very professional. I was. Ben just let me know. He wants me to go back to talking about Owen Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was very professional. He screamed at me in front. Of, call Cameron Crowe. Cameron Crowe. I swear to God, Cameron Crowe apologized to me for Tom Cruise's behavior. Really? When? Yeah, absolutely. On the Did, set, he pulled Isn't it true, Ben? Isn't it true that you did not get along with Ed Norton? <laughs> Ed Norton. In keeping the faith. Isn't that true? Ooh. Him and Ralph Cramden. Uh, <laughs> no, we were all right. We were all right. See, there's somebody you don't get yeah. along with. There's an example. What was no, that? No, it was fine. He, it was just a... No, he, he was a... a I'm gonna, I'm gonna. He was a demanding director. Yes. And uh, we did a lot of takes. It was a long, hot summer in New York. And what? He was trying to tell you how to act. He was going to give you acting tips. This no, thing. What no. was it? It was, it was fine. It was fine. There's no controversy here. You don't want to come clean about this. Well, no. I mean, nothing. Uh, nothing <laughs> he's saving it for think, the book. Nothing worth. Uh, no, nothing worth. Our, I think he's a great actor, and you know. Tom Cruise comes to your house. Tom uh, has not come to my house. I've gone to Tom's house. Not and, uh, now. What? He comes. He, he, you go to his house. Now there's a house. Now there's something to talk about. Who's there? That's Surrey and uh, the one. <laughs> I'm not going to talk well, about that. How dare you? <laughs> no, I'm on the top secret. Come on. What are you? No, I think you've got to talk about Owen Wilson. It's either it's one or the other. I'm more interested that he went to your house. <laughs> he came over to my house to watch football, and <laughs> Adam Carolla was football. there, drunk off his ass, and Tom walks in. He's like, Tom, watch this. Throw me a pass. So Tom throws a football to him, and Adam does his fake, he does his touchdown celebration uh -huh. dance where he pretends to shit the football out of, uh, out, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, and he does this with Tom Cruise and Tom's mother. <laughs> and they pretend uh, to read the paper after. <laughs> it's like uh, paper. So Adam, why did he so, come over your house? So, so Tom Cruise comes over to your house with his mother. Yeah. And Adam says, My Throw father me the was ball. there. My whole family was there. Was his mother his date? And then he catches you. the ball and he pretends to shit the ball out of his ass. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes. And Classy. how long does Tom sure. stay after that? About <laughs> a second. Probably four hours. I think. Really? Yeah, yes. No kidding. Yeah. Boy, how come nobody's coming to my house except Jimmy? <laughs> What's going on? How, did, how did that happen? How did Tom Cruise come over to your house? What were the circumstances? You know him or something? Um, he's on the show and uh, we're talking oh. about football. And he says he's a football fan. And so he came over and watched. A lot of people come over and watch. And it's quite, it runs the gamut from 
my cousin Sal's friends with lazy eyes from deep <laughs> under the sea to, <laughs> to Tom Cruise and Ben Affleck. Right. It's quite That's a... Nice. Oh, ben Affleck, so is Ben Stiller not yeah, part I have not been invited. Yeah, why is he not there? Now, not he's, now he's call. bumming out. Now I got the email. I, this you know, has become the place to be. I, I feel it's, weird, it's a weird <laughs> thing because when celebrities come over... My family goes on. I mean, like they uh, suddenly it's been like you know they get cornered in the in the backyard. My dad just bored the shit out of Tom Cruise for a good like forty minutes straight, talking about his knee operation and telling Tom the prices of every house in the neighborhood. That one just sold for one point two. It's like like he gives a shit about it. Well, Tom Cruise bored us with Seriously, a bunch dad. of movies. Who you, gives so a your shit? dad, your Tom. dad. He's a great guy, and yeah, I'm Tom sure he's Cruise very interested, too. Yeah, Tom Cruise movies are not boring. Jimmy attacked sorry. me. Jimmy just uh, no. attacked me. You don't, you don't believe Tom Cruise could be a dick to somebody? Let me tell you something. Because he fucking didn't walk out after Adam shit out of football? Artie. I mean, I, you Artie. know, come on. Artie, come on now. First I of thought all, we were friends. I didn't attack you, first of all. But yes, you did, out of nowhere. I coked up, Artie. And by the way, coked I up. I wasn't coked up on the set. After, coked up. after the set, I would get coked up. <laughs> you tried fucking getting yelled at. By Tom Cruise and not doing a little blow. So you were coming down, so you were irritable. You were irritable. Me, he, point, he makes a point. I mean, if Tom Cruise yelled at me on a set, I'd do a little blow. I was Absolutely. fucking pissed off. I mean, you know. He, when I... was the last time you did blow before the scene? <laughs> Probably in my trailer. Ah! So wait, we, I forget what we were talking about. We talked Tom about Cruise. we were talking about Tom Cruise. How shitty mystery man was. So what happens? Exactly. You go over. You went over Tom's house and you get to hang out there with other famous people. Um, or just family or whatever. I'm not. I don't want to. You know. It's, what? It's a, he's a great Jimmy guy. Jimmy just talking about the football shitting out. Uh, yeah, right, 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 right. you got to come clean. What was yeah, that? No. Lazy eye Stan. He's a, Will Smith over there. Too? No, no, no. Just like family he, stuff, and it's great. Because, and, and you have to act normal, right? You can't do anything too strange. He's great. He's a I good love. Guy. I had not. Yeah, he's you one of the nicest. I'm the only one with balls. In a fucking room. Oh, what are you He's a shithead. on about over there? <laughs> he, he, you yeah, had it, one, he had one bad day. It happened to be with you. One bad day. Talk to a lot of crews, Rob, and I'll get fucking ads on the phone right now. <laughs> All right, listen to me. I'm trying to find out things here, and that's what I'm trying. I want to be working I construction by Thursday. Sets are hard things because, like you know, people are under pressure on sets, and and every I, I've freaked out people. For everybody freaks out some, at one point on a set. Is that a reason to call me a fat guinea? In other words, didn't. I can't believe that. In other that. words, what you're saying is when you're on I the set. I do not of, believe that. When you're on no, the Cameron Crowe did that. <laughs> when you're on the set of a movie, you're saying you have millions of dollars involved. Yeah, it's a stressful and, and and you have to feel sort of safe and like it's okay that people aren't gonna you know it's that's the thing. So to meet the guy feel... whose portage on is his trailer. Oh, stop it! I'm beginning to feel bad for Christian Bale because he what? cannot get away from that. Outburst he had on the set of Terminator, or whatever it is, Salvation. Ben is laughing at that because I have a feeling that's going to end up in one of your movies. Like you think no, that's it's, on you know what? It just goes on for a very long time. <laughs> oh, and how was the light? Good for you. <laughs> you got to feel at some point it would have like you would have caught it, like like get yeah. yourself under control. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. he was tough as a ten year old. He went off on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's intense. Listen, we got to say this. You're a good guy. Thank you, Howard. And the movie is coming out, and everyone is pulling for you. Thank you very much. There and are I probably people it. in Hollywood who aren't pulling for you. Of course. For you because of course. It's a tough people. town. It's a, yeah, it's a so here's what we've learned. Okay. Tom Cruise is a good guy. Incredible. I think that's all we learned. Bullshit. That's all. <laughs> that's right. You didn't get inside his house. That's one thing for sure. That's right. Tom Cruise is a good guy if you're Ben Stiller. Oh, right. here we go. All right. Oh, come on. Tom Stop Cruise it. shook the hand of every person in our studio audience and then signed like a thousand autographs. In the oh, like I didn't do that when I was there. <laughs> uh, ben. Ben. <laughs> I have heard a rumor. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good for Tom. Oh, he signed. Yeah. And how was the light? How were the handshakes? So, I have learned. Already on coke right now? Yeah. Or what? No, I, I was know. on heroin, and now I'm just out of it. I've learned that you are working on uh, a, a yet another sequel, that uh, The Fockers. Um, we're, so, yeah, we're working on the script right now. He wants that third Hawaii house. And will that be uh, Robert De Niro again? Of course. <laughs> yes. As, and everybody's coming back? Babs, everybody? Um, I think everybody would come back, yeah. 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 Will Robert De Niro be ruining his legacy with another one of those? No. <laughs> you didn't love that? Wait I a minute. That was, that was a good movie. The first one was all right. That movie. I like the first is, one better, too. The, of course the first one yeah. is always better, but that, that was second movie. movie was really... Uh, you got to go back on drugs. You're out of control. Thing, they should forget Raging Bull. 
why don't you calm down? Uh, what was Raging Bull? I'd love no. to hear an answer if I could. Yeah. You know, the fir- I, I like the first one, too, so, but there's like an audience that like the second one. The second one, you know, people really love to... I, I like the first one better. Yeah. No. Well, um, Robert De Niro, he's perfectly professional, though. He's yes. nice to everybody. He's amazing. Yeah. He's iconic. Let me tell you what I, he did to me on the set of Taxi yeah, Driver. Bring it on. <laughs> ben, you are uh, a delight. Thank you. Thank the you, movie Howard. is George going to, I believe, will be very big. People love this franchise. It's a good family. It's a fun family fun movie. Family and it's, flick. you know, got um, funny people in it. Yeah. Who are you up against? Anybody big? This What's week? Christian this Bale. Oh, the Terminator. Terminator. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you face off again. Your old friend. <laughs> Your old <laughs> nemesis. The guy with the pheasant and the reed. We resolve our <laughs> Empire of the Sun differences. We'll get the pheasant. You know, when you think about it, Ben, ben might be, like, one of the biggest movie stars of all time. Like, you just said, meet the parents. Like, I even forgot about that. Right. Like, you don't remember what he's done for Hollywood. That's what I'm saying. How many? You, you really don't need to remember. <laughs> how, many, how, many hundred mil- how many hundred million dollar movies have you been uh, I Honestly, come on. I don't know. Really? There's got to be a thing dozen. about Mary. I'm part you of the don't movies. You I'm don't part like neither museum. I'm just part of the, you know. It's a concept. It's a thing. I'm just so part so. of the whole thing. The it's giant a Ben Stiller squid. There's, project. Right. You know, there's crazy creatures. <laughs> right. It's a whole. Thing. It's a Ben Stiller <laughs> movie though. That's yeah. right. It's He's a gotta Ben Stiller go. project. He's got to go. Steve Carell in there. You're happy too. All right. Listen. Oh, I have to go? No. I mean, really? Is that why you came in? <laughs> Sit down. You're not going anywhere. I'll tell you when you can leave. Some tells me you I have to go, too. So. Yeah, I think you need to leave, too. Listen, um, have Tom Cruise over the house. I'll stop by. Okay. Yeah, and I'll stop by, too. It would be good um, if Tom and Artie had a real sit-down. I'll deck that little fuck. <laughs> Let's get to the bottom of this. Why didn't you when you had the chance, tough guy? Because huh? I wanted to fucking make some money in this business, shithead. <laughs> See Ben Stiller at night at the museum. I'm sorry, I didn't have him over my house. I don't have a friend who shits football. <laughs> You're the spice of this show, aren't you? Right, I love it. You keep it going. Yeah, well, listen, man, I got to do something. See Ben Stiller at night at the museum. Jerry. If I'm not talking, I'm sweeping up. Battle of the, isn't calling. Battle of the Smithsonian opening this Friday in theaters everywhere. I won't be in Valkyrie, too. Tell your wife I said hello. I will. I'm I will. happy with... I never... You know, I haven't seen you since you well, had kids. Well, let's, let's get together again. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. All right. And uh, the great Ben Stiller. And we'll take a break. You've been here very long. I, it, it this flew is by. fun. Yeah, I don't have any fun. friends who shit football. <laughs> <laughs> you, I find that hard to believe. They really shit football. They really Really, it's actually yes, shitting on a football. And, a, right. an occasional now, hockey puck. With this thought, Ben Stiller has been in eight movies that made over a hundred million. There you go. That's eight hundred million in my book. At least a lot of football. And they made way, way over a hundred. And he's going to inherit all those residuals from the taking of Pelham One Two Three. That's right. <laughs> Which your father is amazing in. Thank you. I know. I agree. Yeah, we will take a break and we'll be back. Jimmy Kimmel, of course, is here as well, and we will talk with Jimmy. And there's lots to be said. There's going to be a big recap. <laughs> After I go. Owen Wilson suicide, Neil Patrick Cowan. Well, Jimmy and, and Artie are going to fight. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it almost turned into I noticed those Yankees have jizz all over their faces on the post in the Daily News today. No, that was Gary. We'll be back, jizz. We'll be back right after these words. All right. That's uh, Bowie. David Bowie. Hey, Sal. That's. Uh, How are you? That's Jimmy's cousin Sal. Oh, did hey, everybody! Spend the weekend with? Yeah, fantastic. He's a nice guy. I was <laughs> a little worried about him, but he's a nice guy. <laughs> Sal's another... very quiet. Yeah, he's another Tom Cruise lover. This kid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, what's going on now? Do you have to leave? I think I have to leave soon because I have to do uh, Regis and Kelly. You're doing Regis and Kelly without Regis. Mine, Sans Regis. Yeah. Is Sal, you're going over there, too? I'm going to head over there, yeah. Well, all right. He can stay if you want. <laughs> I understand your cousin Sam's here. <laughs> um, By the right, way, so Howard, yeah. Sal is such a gambler. I love this kid. But he's such a gambler that whenever I see him in L.A., mm-hmm. But I'll say hello, and before he says my name, he'll just go something like, Memphis State. <laughs> <laughs> he'll give me the tip that he has, and the, his tips usually are correct. I Cavaliers did, Wednesday. They've all, been, yeah. they've all been good, right? Yeah. Like four in a row. Hey, would dude, it, really? Would, Cavaliers Wednesday? I, I like the Cavs in the game one. I, I had a question for you, Artie, if I could jump in. If, uh, if being drug-free the rest of your life meant you had to throw like Gary, would you do it? 
No. <laughs> you wouldn't do it? No, Howard asked me a similar question. You would go back did. on drugs. I, I, That's the same I, thing. Because I just think, because I said to Howard, like if I ever saw my father again in hell, um, <laughs> I would uh, I would be able to explain heroin to him. <laughs> but throwing like that, he would feel like such a failure as a dad, you know. What um, what What is the thing with your family, Jimmy? Now, you have Sal, who is Sal, is your head writer? No, no, no. Sal is a writer on the show, and he's on the show. Sal's a yes. writer on the show. Then and you have how many other relatives? Former. How many show. relatives work on the uh, late night with Jimmy? My Kimmel? uncle Frank, my aunt Chippy. Live with Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel live. My Whatever. brother I Jonathan. Yeah. And um, and my cousin Mickey. Mm. Wow. As you like being people. surrounded by your family that much? Yeah. You do. Yeah. I can't. I can't. But they're also uh, obviously talented. Yeah, well, Sal sounded. We don't know about the rest of them. Oh. <laughs> you know, they, well, I don't you know. You think Jimmy's just like having talented. them in? Who didn't Wait. get hired? Now, are there relatives who feel bad that they didn't get hired? In other words, a lot of relatives might be saying, "Well, well, you hired Sal. You hired this. We hired that one." Uh, Uncle and Frank. And what did they do to get hired? Yeah. I think they understand. I mean, you have to either be really funny or unintentionally very funny, and the, and the people t fall into two categories. My mm -hmm. uncle Frank, for instance. If he tries to be funny, he's awful, but he's he's one of the dumbest Americans. He's really. the greatest guy, your Uncle Frank. He's a good guy. I love him. Right. So, in other words, the rest of the family understands. Yes, the rest of the family understands. Because, right, like, you have a sister and brother, but do they, do they want to appear My brother on the works show? on the show. Your brother works on the, on the show. show. Okay, all right. Yeah. Now yeah. I get it. Okay. By the way, I don't know how well Jimmy treats his family yeah. on the show, because I asked his Uncle Frank how he gets home every night, and he said, I take the subway. <laughs> he does. He's the only fucking person in L.A. I ever met who takes the subway. <laughs> He's <laughs> the only one that speaks English that takes the subway. <laughs> you kick in a car for that yeah. guy? He likes taking the subway. He loves it. Now, uh, what are you going to do when... Um... By the way, I just have a quick subway story. My Uncle Frank, he's on the subway about three weeks ago. He gets on. This black guy comes on the subway in a wheelchair. Wheels up next to Uncle Upset. Frank. Next to him. <laughs> he's got a cup. My Uncle Frank grabs a couple dollars and puts it into this guy's <laughs> cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so good. He tells him, keep, you can keep it. You keep it. All right, so am I saying goodbye to you? I'm, I don't want to hold you I here. I think we have to All leave, right. unfortunately. Yeah. Sadly. Sal, good yeah. seeing you. Thank it was you. nice spending time with you. Uh, Jimmy, you. I wish you continued success. I hope these upfronts, whatever I, they are, go now, well for you. Now I feel weird about the next time. If, I, I feel weird about visiting you. because. Why? I, because I feel like... You mean visiting him at home? Yeah, because not I feel like you always get the me. honest account, but then I feel like I'm making you uncomfortable when no, I'm at your house. Not at all. I, I love being with you. We go away on vacation together. Why, I mean, what's the matter with you? Well, I don't... Because you said then you feel like you have to entertain me. You don't have to entertain me. Don't worry. Me. I know, I'm self-entertaining. Uh, believe me, and so <laughs> okay, am I. Okay, good. How dare you? <laughs> uh, look, I don't know what's yes. going on in your romantic life. <laughs> I'm sorry you... Is he you dating? You didn't even find out for well, us. I would never ask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know I'm dating Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> you're not the type of guy that... We're not going to open up the tabloids and see you're dating like every woman in Hollywood. Now that no. you're free of Sarah and you're, you're a single guy. Definitely not. You're Definitely. not. You're not going to womanize. What are you going to do? You know, are I'm you not going like to that. a dating service? Are you? What are yeah, you doing? Uh, Millionaire matchmaker? I'm on that uh, <laughs> Ashley Madison. Well, you're on Ashley certain... Madison. You only date married women. Yes, I'm only talking married women. Well, right. Jimmy has a certain type. I think he's going to ask Elaine Boozler. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, the dating will begin. The dating will commence as soon as you get over Sarah. It's theoretically, yes. I yes. guess so. Yes. Excellent. We can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> who will it be? Jennifer Love Hewitt? Well, who will uh, the lucky lady will be? You will you be picking up women on the show? Will, will you do that, Lou? No, I don't think so. I can't imagine that that will happen. <laughs> Who are your guests for the rest of the week when you get back to L.A.? We'll pick out one well, for you. Well, Ben Stiller. Uh, uh, I, don't, I really don't him. know who the guests are, to be honest with you. Do you fantasize that you'll be with another famous woman? I mean, Sarah was famous. Was that fun? I've decided never, ever to to go out with another famous person. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Why? Unless they're really, really good looking. What? Kathleen Turner. <laughs> Uh, Why? Yeah. yeah. Maybe because, another hot Jewish comedian like a Woody Goldberg. There's nothing I hate more than <laughs> being the subject of. I don't like being the subject of uh, uh, speculate. I don't like people being interested in my life like that. But aren't so you people got into the right business? But aren't yeah, people going to always be interested in yeah, your you're, life? You're... Not nearly. You, it's exponential when it's someone when it's two famous people. Nobody cares about 
who other you know like nobody cares about Conan, who Conan is dating right right well because Conan's married yeah but nobody cared beforehand nobody cares that he's married I either. think they would well you're saying because she's not in the business yeah. is what you're saying right. oh I see so when you're dating another famous I'm person try to be more like Conan if, you're gonna try and be like Conan O'Brien yes that sounds like uh, makes a lot of sense you better get better writers <laughs> but it is possible because you're in Hollywood and you meet the girls you meet are girls who come on your show who are in fact famous and a lot of these. Uh, you know, actresses and stuff. I mean, it's hard to resist. I I, well, I say it's it's you know not hard for them to with? resist. No. <laughs> so, I no. think you ought to fix him up with Renee Zellweger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could have fucked her on the set of The Bachelor. <laughs> Would I let like her off the hook. Renee Zellweger. Uh, no, I know she's. No, that's. Have not, you I'm met not her? In that. I have met her. You've had her on the show. Yeah, uh, I, 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 yeah, I think so. I, not I, attracted to Renee Zellweger. It, it, it has nothing to do with it. <laughs> what, what? Would you never think about fucking her? Um, no, really I don't. wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm not interested. If, could... I, if I was single, I would fuck Renee Zellweger. <laughs> I would. You could get her at Bridget Jones' diary. Do you, do you, you don't fantasize want to go out with anyone famous? But, do you, but wait a second. You don't fantasize like maybe a night with Carmen Electra or no. nothing like that. That's not my thing. What? What do you mean? Not your thing. Well, take, wait a minute. I, what about some why, supermodel? Wh explain no. that to me. What do you mean you can't take Carmen Electra? I, I need. Um, I think there, there has to be some depth there for me. Oh, so supermodels are all stupid. So Sarah was so deep. Yeah. <laughs> well, put, I'll put it to you this way. Sarah would never do this. Carmen Electra... Look, I said Jimmy was deep. Carmen Electra was once asked on a talk show, what's the one thing she couldn't live without? And after she thought for a minute, she said food. So, you know, I don't think Sarah would ever do that. That's a good answer. But do you think that Sarah will date someone famous? I don't know. Does I, she I need no that? No, I don't think so. She doesn't need that. So, so well, it'll be interesting to see what you end up doing. Sal, what do you think? Sal, you're married. <laughs> I'm married, yeah. So, uh, but Jimmy what do you is, think? Uh, I'm not gonna, I wasn't supposed to say anything, but he's secretly dating a pizza chef, this guy Chris Bianco. I'm not even kidding. He flies him out. It's, the guy stayed with him for like a week, and then there's another chef that comes in, Adam Perry Lang, and they cook, and uh, that's his focus right You now. love yeah. to cook, right? That's your thing. I do, yeah. I love you're to eat. You're a cook? Yeah. Oh. I do. Yeah, By yeah. the way, fucking a pizza chef where I'm from is not Robin, gay. <laughs> you should try eating food. It's delicious. <laughs> I'm going to do that when I do that. Yeah, that sounds crazy. <laughs> All right. So, and also, will you and Sarah become friends in the future where she will be able to come on the no, show? No, we will not. You will not become friends. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's going to be a major like showbiz that feud that lasts centuries. I agree with you. You're not going to become friends. <laughs> Listen, I got enough friends. But, <laughs> So interesting. All of the girls are going to come on your show. You might you might fall victim to the fact you're assuming that these girls that there's that there is like they're lining up to date Jimmy. me. First Which of all, you're one of the, the most case. handsome, eligible bachelors. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you're running the show. There's an aphrodisiac. Yeah, but it's, it is. Yeah. It's power. Like, yeah. when I'm there, I want to fuck them. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but seriously, I mean, you don't, first of all, you're, you're, you're a handsome man, right? I mean, <laughs> you're not? <laughs> no. Why do Come I find now. you attractive? <laughs> you don't. But I do. I mean, seriously, you're a nice-looking guy. Yeah. You're, you're, you're young. You have a, you you're have a great funny. job. Howard, he's the seventh like best-looking guy in this room. That's right. It might be true. Well, he's lucky. Will you attempt to have Sarah blacklisted from <laughs> show business and from Is other she talk out shows? Of the biz? Will you keep her off it's not ABC? A bad idea. <laughs> will you walk? Will you go into Michael Eisner's office and say, "Guess who's a communist?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Michael Eisner's no longer there. Yeah. Uh, listen, he still got some juice. So that's interesting. You will not go the route of, let's say, Johnny Carson, or uh, these... and be successful. No, yeah. you will not go the route of Johnny Carson. <laughs> And date some of the uh, you know tea time players or uh, you know you will know. Uh, yeah, no. have the girls on your show. Hire I don't them have any tea time them. players. You don't. No, I don't. No, uh, no it's not my. You know, right. you know me. It's not my. Look, thing. Howard. He was on the Man Show and never fucked one of the juggies. Not like, only did he was a married. Was... Not only didn't I fuck any of them, I would hide in my room reading from them. I didn't <laughs> want to be part of it. The... Well, well, Leno... they don't want to read with you. <laughs> Let me uh, before you leave because I know you yes. have to go. Will Leno's new show fail? I'm talking about this. Now, you're in the late night game. You spend a lot of time on your show, and I know you do a lot of hard work, and people yes. should watch Jimmy's show. But w will you will you take a look at Leno's new show? And you've probably given this some evaluation. You probably even have research on this. Yes. Don't you think, this is what I think, Leno made the biggest mistake of his career, not staying in late night television. I think it would have been safer to go to ABC, yeah, for him to go to ABC at 11.30. Yes. But that would have been horrible for you. You wouldn't want him at 11.30. Not necessarily, because it would be a better lead-in than Nightline, and perhaps there would have been other networks that were interested in me. But you told me you would never happened. follow Leno. That's right. You, you said, said you were going to leave. No, but I changed that eventually. Oh, did you? Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. You thought it through. 
Yeah. You said I'll go on at twelve thirty. Leno can go on at eleven thirty. Yes. You really, th you really would have gone ahead and done that. I yeah. don't believe you. I know. I honestly would have. Absolutely. You would, would not have, have gone to another network. Let's say if um, I might. I mean, I would have considered. What if Fox that. needed a late night? I guy? would have considered it. Yes. You would have. Yes. That would have been a good thing. Yeah. But now Leno will die at ten o'clock, won't he? It's the end. Do you think? <laughs> do you ever envision a scenario where perhaps Leno? Uh -huh. Could end up going back to the Tonight Show when they fire Conan, and then Kono, Conan or whatever his name is comes over to ABC. I don't know. You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know about all of those things, but I could envision any of those those things individually happening. Well, yeah. how do you feel yeah. that Leno's going to do? I don't. I just. I give us your prediction. I don't. You know what? I don't think it's going to be successful. I'll be honest with you, and I don't think it has anything to do with Jay. I think it has all to do with the uh, local Time affiliates. Shot. And their news, where they make all their money, and and if the lead-in is not as strong, they're going to scream and yell and demand something, and it's going to be a mess. This Leno move could be the end of all television, is it what you're be. saying. Right? Yeah. This could actually Let's end television, so. as we as we think Let's about hope it. So we should start twittering more. Will and, Jay take Stuttering John? Yes, Jay will definitely take Stuttering John, and I believe oh. that Jay has told Stuttering John, and Stuttering John just isn't saying because they want to keep it all a secret. Uh, you think it's that oh. big a deal? Oh. I, I, think, mean, I mean, why I think Jay think it's that big a deal? Really? Do you think if Leno gets into real trouble, he'll divorce uh, Mavis and date Sarah Silverman? <laughs> that would be a surprise. <laughs> she was lucky for you, maybe. Uh... If Leno gets divorced, he'll try to steal back. My prediction is Leno will do poorly. I believe it will not last long. I believe uh, Conan might be moved out, but he will be tarnished. In other words, he will have failed. You're saying Conan is not going to be successful? Uh, I don't know, because if Jay isn't successful, well, Conan has to be more successful than Leno was. And also, now, if Jay doesn't do well, it hurts Conan's rating. Right. Aha! Uh -huh. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you're saying everyone's fucked. Yeah, Jay's going to screw up everybody. You're not fucked. You're in the perfect position. You're so not fucked. You're not dating anybody. <laughs> yeah, but I'm flying like coach, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're shitting in front what of What is Ralph? it, Ralph? Quickly, because uh, Jimmy Kimmel oh, has no. to leave here. He has a very active... This is uh, never life. a good thing when Ralph calls, <laughs> I know. Well, Jimmy, I love you, but I don't understand. <laughs> That's great. How come, you're not, how come you're not out there getting laid and going crazy? And, you, you know, like, I, you, I know you're straight, and so, like, why wouldn't you want to... Like you want to have conversations or something? It sounds like. Well, Ralph, you know I'm not. You know I'm not that type, right? I mean, I think you would have gathered that about me by now. Well, you're not, a, you're not a pig. I, you're not a sex not, maniac. Like you got to go in and just pick up some floozy and uh, <laughs> oh. every night. But like, Jimmy, I, you should be vomiting at Howard's house. You got to right. live it up. <laughs> <laughs> I told Sal to vomit. At your house. Uh, <laughs> hey, Ralph. Hey, Ralph. What bitch has Jimmy ripped off from Howard lately? <laughs> <laughs> Ralph is ripping off Jimmy lately. There you go. Have Thank you seen you, Stuttering Sal? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ralph. Uh, Jimmy, no, but really, I mean, you think Jimmy fun. should be banging the hottest chicks in Hollywood? Ralph, give me a little time. Give me a little time. I need to. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you need Ralph to help you with that. Yeah. All right, I'm thank you, in. Ralph. Jimmy's got a huge TV. <laughs> I do have the there biggest TV go. in the world. I haven't right, seen listen. a Tom Cruise and his mom out. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna Ralph, be... Can you tell the story real quick of why, like, t that thing that you did to Jeffrey Ross? Wow. Uh, you know what? I think we'll miss the uh, Regis and Kelly show yeah. if, we, if we tell it, though. I don't even know it's what he's a, talking about. Uh, I told you about the prank he pulled on Jeff Ross, Sal. Oh, right, right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. I told him he was, so we, we get a heads up ahead of time who's going to be voted off, so I texted Jeffrey Ross. On Dancing was, with the Stars. On Dancing with the Stars, sorry. I said, you're safe. And he said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I'm but sure. But Jeffrey was really into it and in love with this girl and... And then on the air, he re he was pretending to be nervous the whole show, like he didn't know. He and then on the air, you see him when he gets eliminated. He goes, "We could, we lost." <laughs> I had inside information. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's right, because you guys great. get tipped off who's going to be losing Dancing with Nobody the Stars. Nobody thought we did. Oh, oh, he thought you did. I get it. All right, thank you, Ralph. Your Sal, fascinating phone call. <laughs> Sal was trying to kill the odds. You know, he was, he was <laughs> betting on Dancing with the Stars. All right, listen, Jimmy. I'm yes. not going to hold you anymore. Thank you, Howard. Jimmy Kimmel. What uh, a beautiful weekend. Thank you beautiful very much. I, I love you. It's always great seeing you. Yes, and any time you're around, I, I want to be with you. And Sal, you too. You're Excellent. always welcome. All right. The great Jimmy Kimmel and Sal, his cousin. <laughs> Sal, what's your last name? Uh, do I have one? Icono. Icono. Do you don't use that name? No, I do. Yeah. You just you switched it to Kimmel? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way Opera Man says Icon. That's right. right. <laughs> and uh, and so there it is. And will uh, will Sal make it onto the Regis set? Will he actually? He probably be... will, yeah. yeah. Probably will probably Maybe he'll move out Kelly Ripa <laughs> and just put Sal in yeah. place. I think Sal took my wallet. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, let's uh, let's just say thank you. All right. Thank friends. you very All much. Right. So much. Yes. All right. There goes the boys. I'm not going to take a break because. Okay. All right. All right. I'll let you go. All right. Bye, guys. I'll see you bye, Jimmy. all. Bye, Jimmy. Bye, Sal. I always get sad when Jimmy leaves. I know. I, I know. like Jimmy. You're, you're going to cry again? I like him. Jimmy's a good guy. He's a good guy. And now he thinks he wasn't a good guest. You're terrible. Um, why is that? You told him you didn't enjoy him at no, your house. No, I did. I liked him. <laughs> uh, Josh, go ahead. You're on the air. Howard, I know you always get neurotic about your interviews and think they're bad, but that was, uh, when Ben Stiller was in there, that was all amazing with uh, Jimmy and Artie going at it, too. That was just, that's going to be on the 2009 Best Of compilation at the end of the there year. There you go. There you go. All right. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Jeff, you're on the air. Yeah, I got to disagree with that one. I think that Artie was a little bit of a jerk-off. I think that he just wasn't even fucking fair. He didn't let the, uh, Stiller finish any stories and just kept on jumping in and jumping in. What do you think, Artie? <laughs> I think uh, you're right. Thank you. Well, Artie's not going to agree with that. I mean, listen, I, when I listen back to the show, sometimes I hate what I do. And you're probably right. <laughs> I can't uh, stand what I do, but what am I going to do? Do something else for a little? Let's go to Pete. Pete, you're on the air in Pittsburgh. What's up, Howard? Hey, now. Uh, can you explain to me why a 55-year-old married man still has the need to have sleepover parties with men? What do you mean? Is Jimmy hey. 55? Well, I mean, why do you still have the need to have, like, Jimmy Kimmel? No, Jimmy Jimmy was in town, and um, he was. Uh, we wanted to see each other, so we had a chance to hang out. That's you all. obviously have nothing to do together. What activities would no, you No, we actually had a, we had a good time together. We sat, we talked, we ate some food together. We had a good time. You don't have people over? I never have people over. Mm. There's no he doesn't point. know anybody. <laughs> Unless you're going to, like, smoke some weed, play some video games, really do something together for a period of time. There's no, why would you have a guy stay at your house? Mm. Right. Well, you never heard. Uh, All right, no, uh, let's go right. to Joe. What do you, what I, 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 I don't have a need to have people stay. My, I have, I have friends who I don't get to see a lot. Jimmy lives in Los Angeles. This is a silly conversation, Pete. I mean, can't they stay at a hotel? You meet up for dinner. You know, it wasn't that dress. kind of thing. We, it was fine. Uh, believe me, you're, you, you're way out of line. How Joe, am I allowed ahead. to cut off Pete's stories? Yeah, oh. Joe, you're on the air. Hey, is is Artie there today? <laughs> that, that, that was a joke. Hey, look, is uh, good one. Yeah, is there any way that you can record the uh, uncomfortable off the air conversation you're going to have to have with him, letting him know it's a Howard Stern show? <laughs> okay, thank you, Joe. We've had that conversation already. Right. Right. All right, thank you. Oh man, let's go to <laughs> Mark. Mark, you're on the air. Hey now. Hey now. Hey, uh, do you ever notice? Uh, I've watched Jimmy's show a couple of times. He, he, is he part Chinese, or is he just squinting like a Chinaman because of the lights? Or what? <laughs> is he squints. He squints. Is, is, no, That's his thing. <laughs> uh, he left. Actually, Jimmy's all Chinese. <laughs> you hang out with the guy. You know, you look at him all the time. Does he squint all the time? I don't know. I don't really. I don't really look you at him. You don't analyze. Like I don't look at Jimmy. I don't like Gilbert. Like he doesn't squint like Gilbert squints. You know? No, not right. that bad. But it's pretty. It's noticeable. I mean, I don't know if it was the lights they got on the show, but it, I don't know. He, he looks like a normal guy to me. I don't know what you want me to say. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Well, interview, by the way. What? I like the interview, by the way. Oh, good. All right. Thank All you. Right. Thanks for that. Benji Barak here, and as well as Artie Lang joining us on the wrap-up show. Hey, I, I decided to come in and interrupt you guys a lot. <laughs> Teddy's on the board. We'll take your calls. 888 Stern 100. I decided to come in and talk over John. Hey, it's the John Hines Show. 783-7610. Give us Tell a call. Tell Artie it's the John Hines Show. You're not going to finish a fucking sentence today, buddy. <laughs> Give us a call if you want to hear Artie interrupt me. We'll start with Rick in Portland. He's got a relevant question. Rick, welcome to the wrap-up show. Hey, so this whole Artie interrupting thing is going to be one of his jokes that he beats to death over and over and over again, or is it the fake laugh? Which one can I sir, count on you more probably every show? You, Sir, you probably know a fake laugh better than anybody, because yeah, you've gotten yeah, no, many of them when you try to be funny. Show. You probably know a fake orgasm, too, because so many chicks have done it with you, you fucking piece of shit. I got You're news like for you. Oh, for, let, me tell you let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell. You, no, listen, sir. I'm on the radio. You're not. Let me talk. Now, let me let me talk. Let me talk a little bit. I'm interrupting. I'm interrupting. I know, but you're not funny. Listen. Yeah, well, listen listen to me. Hey, listen. I'm going to do heroin just for the interviews. I've decided. Oh God, I've never heard that joke before. What, buddy? The only joke is your cell phone. Hey, do at least a Larry Vanelli impression. 
What'd you say? Todd, now that Lisa Lanthanelli... All right, what's your, nationality? what's your nationality? What's your nationality? I'll do one. What's your nationality? I don't know. Norwegian? I don't know. What, what's, what's funny about Norwegian? that? Norwegian? Yeah. Yeah. Let me make fun of them. <laughs> you dirty no Norwegian. <laughs> They're fucking no, Viking. That makes no talent. Sir, well, then why am I on the show if I have no... Why, why have I been on the Howard Stern show? Well, why do you listen to it? Why do you listen to it? You used to be funny. You used to be funny. What year? What date did I stop being funny? Uh, two years ago. So why do you think that is? Right, wait, yeah. hold on a second. I don't know. Wait, hold on a second. For six years I was funny. and the uh, last barely. Two, uh, the, so barely funny or funny? Um... Moderately funny. Moderately funny. So why would you listen? I mean, I've been a big part of the show, man. I mean, why would you listen to someone? No, who you weren't really that big of a part of the show. That's why you were moderately funny. You weren't. You weren't a focal point. Now you are. Gar a was I a moderate part of the show? Funny. Absolutely not. No, I mean, hold, hold, I, don't, I don't know what this guy's talking. Rick, hold on a second, guys. Hold on, Rick. Rick, hold on a second. Rick, hold on. Rick, hold on. Hold on, Rick. So what? What? So what was funny about Artie two years ago? That's not funny to you today. Yeah, Rick. That would just be an observation. He cut in a joke. Once in a while. Now it is a constant joke. If anybody mentions a certain thing, it's it's like he's a human sound clip of the same joke going over the and same over. Joke? Pretty much, Lisa Lampanelli joke. You can't get enough of that. All right, right? name 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 some other ones. Oh my God! Uh, anything that's going to be crude about a cock or a cut so there's a lot or... of the same jokes I'm making. <laughs> You're an idiot, Rick. You what do you do for a living? And so there's like 50 of the same jokes I keep making. You Howard laughs at that. them. Howard laughs at them, and I got to make him laugh, dude. That's what. That's why I get paid four million dollars more a year than you do. Hey, so on on uh, what do you do, Rick? What do you do May for a living? 5th, on May 5th, hey, Rick. Today in Cinco de Mayo, Artie goes. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is Yeah, that's that exactly shit? what, that's how the show opened that day. That's right, Rick. Hey, no, 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 play it back, Artie. You'll hear I, I don't own serious, Rick. Compare. I can't play it back. Let me tell you something. What do you do for a living? Uh, it has no relevance to this story. It has no relevance to life, because you don't work, probably. Well, you're probably yeah, at home with a bomb that hasn't right been cleaned now. in four years, uh, trying to call up the show and say a famous person isn't funny. You're bitter. You think you're funny. Your friends probably say, Rick is so funny. And when he calls no, Artie not funny, funny, he's so funny. His observations about comedy funny. are so <laughs> great. Have you ever talked to Rick about comedy? He's like Albert Brooks. Rick just knows everything. He's got an irrelevant job, yeah, and he knows. Who's that Artie has, time, makes 80 of the same wait. jokes every day. He can tell yeah, a fake laugh. He knows that Artie interrupts a lot. Rick is the best. That's why we all fuck him. You only have a few comebacks, too? That is sad. I just, I just had about 400 comebacks. Listen, Rick, no, just, say what, you do for, just say, what you do say what you do for a living. Say what you do for a living. Do you have a girlfriend? I'm on Howard's leg saying, Daddy, don't pay attention to anybody else. Only pay attention to me. No, I'm saying, Daddy, give me my $5 million a year. Listen, what do you do for a living? Rick. That has no relevance in the You don't story, do anything. Right? Do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend? What? Do you have a girlfriend? Oh, it's a gay joke. I get it. No, I, I gay jokes are so unpopular. That's why Eddie Murphy has eight houses. Listen, oh, what, 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 uh, what, what, hey, hey, Rick, hey, Rick, hey, Rick, do you have a girlfriend? No, because I'm not <laughs> you, you're jobless and girlfriendless, and you're giving me shit. Go out I and enjoy job, life, and you I'm fuck. I'm I'm married and I have and a And you don't have a girlfriend? What a loser. You're a loser, married without a girlfriend. Oh, oh my god. You Sounds are like you're hilarious. bad at fake laughing. Yeah, that's horrible, Artie. Rick, where okay, do you I'm live? Not a total so you guys have a good day. <laughs> All right, get, get, uh, Rick, come down here and I'll beat the fuck out of you. I think Rick just hung up. Rick. Of course he did, because he's an asshole. Rick, thank you for calling in on the wrap up show. Uh listen, I, I want to pay for Rick's subscription this year. <laughs> You did say you you took a lot of Artie, you took a lot of crap yesterday for interrupting and people say you're talking Bullshit. too much like even you said you thought you uh might have insulted an A-list guest or something no, like I, that. No, I didn't insult Ben Stiller. He left that he got it, after the interview he got up and said that was fucking hilarious and he shook my hand. I mean, listen, I don't think uh, I was going to work with him before the interview and I don't think I'm going to work <laughs> with him now. Uh no, it's funny that uh people think that. I don't know. Some people like it.
But, uh, you know, you got to read Howard. I should be good at reading Howard now. And I think, uh, you know, I, I got to be someone who just talks when I should talk. <laughs> but how do you know when that is? I don't know when that is. <laughs> well, welcome to the, yeah, Exactly. It was my fucking rap with Howard this morning. It was crowded in there yesterday. You know, it was very crowded. Jimmy was in there. And, uh, and Jimmy, you know, you, you want to say stuff that's funny. If you think it's something funny, you want to say it. But at the same time, you got two big stars like Howard and Ben Stiller uh, talking to each other. And that's interesting to people. Like when Paul McCartney, look, I know Ben Stiller. I know Norm. I kind of know Tom Bergeron. So when they're in, and look, and if Howard's laughing at something I'm saying, I'm going to keep going. I don't care if Rick isn't enjoying it. I got an audience of one, man. It's Howard. And uh, if he looks annoyed, I try to stop. But uh, I really think that um, the, the guy made the point yesterday that I was funnier on heroin. And look, I agree with him. Who isn't funnier on heroin? So for the good of the show, I will shoot up right before a guest comes in. Okay. I'm being serious. Well, don't do that. Yeah, I, I might. Do you have any? Do you have my works? Did I leave it here? No, I don't. Have, you don't <laughs> do have you, works. Do you think you're? I have works. You said you're the first guy. Said you don't inject. Well, a chick injected me once. Then right. I injected well, her. I don't have her. How one. about that joke, Rick? Do you think you're funnier when you're fucked up? <laughs> no. I don't think I'm funny at all. <laughs> I happen to agree with Rick. <laughs> um, all right. It's look. amazing that I'm in this business. I'm I'm not particularly good looking. I'm not talented. I'm really not that funny if you think about it. And uh, I'm an asshole. And I'm homophobic. I mean, how am I in show business? I'm not photogenic. I'm not the camera's friend. But somehow, you know, I I, uh, I have four homes. <laughs> and how long have you been in this business for? 20 years. How long have you been in the business already? 20, 18 years, 20 years? About 17 years. Must be doing something, right? You know, and Rick doesn't have a job. Or a girlfriend. Or a mistress. He's got a wife, no job, and no girlfriend. <laughs> right. Rick didn't want to say where he lived, but it's hell. All right, let's move on. chào tất cả mọi người và hôm nay bên em lại về một chiếc CI10 số sàn sản xuất 2018 bản 1.2 và xe thì có màu trắng và em sẽ quay tổng thể chiếc xe cho mọi người xem con này thì cũng bị à, đâm vào phần taxi của bung túi phí rồi mọi người nhé vì vậy giá của em nó thì giảm rất là nhiều so với những con xe cùng đời rồi biểu